Hello, YouTube. How we doing today? What's going on, everybody? How the hell are you? Once again, it is my pleasure to introduce the lovely and talented Brit pop bad girl from the best podcast around, Claire Weaver with The Days Gone Podcast. Hey, girl. What's up? Hey. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Uh, let's see. How the hell do I get this keyboard down? Okay, there we go. Hey, all right. Let's say hello to the chat. Uh, let me see. We got Jeremy McGee. Hello, my brother. What's up? Dan, Dandy Denny. Uh, Chrissy Cuppy Cake. Welcome back, ma'am. Quasimoto. Hello, sir. Let me see who else we got. Daryl Patrick. What's up, man? Uh, and, uh, Joe Schmo. Hello, 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 Joe Schmo. What's up, everybody? Good to see y'all back. Uh, yeah. So what's going on, Miss Claire? How are you? How's your new year? It was good. Yeah? Yeah. Cool? Yeah. How about you? It's actually been a fan-fucking-tastic year so far. I'm going to be entirely honest. It's been a good year. <laughs> it's only been a couple days, but it's been a damn good year. <laughs> Here's hoping the streak lasts. Yeah, right? Well, you know, just got to keep that momentum going. Uh, so, um, let's play some fucking Days Gone, man. That's a, that's a good way to stay, start the year off, right? Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what we're doing. Uh, I know we're here in Lost Lake. I know we've got a couple of pretty serious story missions coming up. Uh, I think right now we've got the mission ready to go do uh, one of the Nero stealth missions. I think it's the one on Herod's birthday or something. Uh, so we can go see what's going on with that. Uh, I really don't know what else we have going on. So let's just... You know, let's go ahead and kick this off and see what kind of trouble we can get into. What do you think? Trouble's my middle name. Let's do it. <laughs> Hello, Trouble. All right. All right, yes, yeah, so we've already got this one selected the uh, on Herod's birthday. And, okay, let's go. Let's do it. I do have a slightly different uh, weapon setup right now. I should have swapped back over to the auto shotgun, probably. That is my favorite gun, but I'm running the chopper right now, just in case we decide to go take on some hordes or something like that. You know, just for the hell of it. Oh, shit. Check that out. Sorry. I've already stopped to fuck around in photo mode. <laughs> oh, wow, shit. Yeah. Isn't that nice? And let's maybe just... What do you think about a little bit of tilt? Should we go this way? This way? I kind of like this way. That's kind of cool. Mm. So how was everyone's new year? Yeah. So in tell, the chat. Yeah, tell us about your new year. Genuinely curious. Hope everybody's off to a good start so far. Ozzy well, says, I once dated a girl whose middle name was Treasure. Apparently it was tradition for the oldest daughter of the oldest daughter to have that middle name. Interesting. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That is interesting. So Ooh, Jeremy says COVID. You have COVID? Yeah, wait, what? You got COVID, dog? No shit. Man, I didn't even know. I've I've been on my days off the last few days, so didn't even know. Well, I hope you don't have it too bad. Right. Okay, let's quit fucking around in photo mode. <laughs> Josh Mo says, "Rex, you and your love affair with photo mode is going to make the screen series so much longer, and yeah, I am I here for it." <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> right on, brother. <laughs> I really do love photo mode in this game. They just, I mean, not only is the game so incredibly cinematic and, I don't know, so visually powerful, it's, but they just did a good job with photo mode itself. There's so much you can do with it. Hello. Yeah, you get some great images. I actually stole a few of yours for Instagram. <laughs> I saw that, yeah. Uh, this week. Yeah, you, you loaned them to me. Yeah. Um, I realized I don't, for some reason, I don't have any pictures of Iron Mike. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm ashamed to admit that. <laughs> um, I was trying to post some pictures because last week's episode and this week's episode of the podcast are all about Iron Mike. Right. Like yeah. Episode, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, with Quasimoto. He mm-hmm. joins me on the podcast to talk about Iron Mike. Um, yeah. And I was trying to post some pictures and I was like, oh, sh- how do I not have any? Right. Yeah. How do cool. I not have any Iron Mike pictures? You know, I got your back, girl. I got you covered. Yeah. Uh, so you need to play photo mode in Tsushima too. Oh, oh man, I really, really do. Actually, I, uh, I'm going to try to put some more time into Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, actually, Quasimodo gave me a killer idea. I'm, I'm fully on board with this idea. Uh, what he suggested is that I play Ghost of Tsushima on my spare time and do like those missions where you... Uh, you know, just kind of level up your character and get new gear and stuff like that. Do those on my personal time, but then uh, do the story missions in my live streams. That way, the live stream doesn't take you know six months to finish. Which I think that's a fantastic idea. I really want to do that. I just never have any personal time to play video games on my own time anymore. Uh, literally, all of the gaming that I've been doing here lately is when I'm streaming. I, I pretty much never get to play on my own time. So fantastic news in the chat. What's Alan up? Patrick got a PS5 Christmas. Oh, shit. Right on, brother. <laughs> so Yeah, for <laughs> real. So tell me the first game you're playing is Days Gone, right? Got you. Finally. He says, but but we like six month long streams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and honestly, I really don't mind dedicating six months to a badass game like Ghost of Tsushima. But uh, there are actually a lot of other games. Uh, I have a backlog of really good games that I'm just dying to get to. So I I don't want to rush Ghost of Tsushima. You know where he is. But I don't want to spend six months on it either. Besides, that would cut into my days gone time. Anderson Diaz says hi. Hey, what's going on? Hello. Hello and welcome. Okay. I feel like getting a PlayStation 5 deserves like a level of congratulations like you, you know, you had a baby or something. <laughs> We'd send you a card. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's uh, uh, open a pack of cigars or some shit. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, Daryl, was it a boy or a girl? Brian, <laughs> he says it was days gone. Mm, <laughs> right days on. gone all day. <laughs> Good job, sir. Good job. <laughs> Why am I here? I show uh, Hilo incoming to that location now. Be ready. O'Brien out. Uh. Phew. That's why I'm here. Yeah. So this is another one where um, O'Brien puts you up to following some uh, some Nero folks so he can get some intel on them. Yeah, yeah kind of hard to miss. What do you need me to do? And this stuff is this stuff ties into the episode you did on your podcast where you had uh, Bernardo De Paula as a guest, uh, and he he talked a little bit about some of the stuff that Nero has going on in the background, where you know there are factions within Nero, and they're not all cooperating, and the ones at the top have an agenda that the rest of them don't know about. So looking at it from looking at these missions from that perspective, it makes them a lot more interesting to me. Also, the. Um the dialogue in this scene, um, it, it just sort of speaks to how intelligent and how um, like educated these people are. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very kind of oh right, yeah, because this is you know just talking about the on Herod's birthday and you know the uh, the the history of the namesake for Hot Springs Camp and stuff. It's uh, you know Salome Hot Springs. Um, that's kind of some esoteric stuff that you know not everybody knows that shit. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, that is fucked up. So I do have a pretty effective... Oh, hello. This should be right here. Yeah. I have a pretty effective method for completing this mission. Uh, if you come up here in the roof, come up here on the second story of this convenience store or garage or whatever, 
you can stay up here and pretty much remain completely undetected easily through the whole thing. Which is fantastic, because I, I sometimes fail this mission just from, like, not being in the right spot. True. Forgetting where, they, where they're where they going to walk to. Yeah, I mean, it's all about being in the right position at the right time. Mm -hmm. You know it. There we go. And she's like quoting this stuff word for word. That's what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. who does that? Exactly. Nobody, exactly. nobody yeah. does that. Except, I mean, like, seriously academic people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Her big fucking nerds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Upload <laughs> complete. Yeah. The Bible? Now they're reciting Bible verses. Oh, yeah, Quasimodo mentions uh, O'Brien, originally a, quote, grad student. Now, two years later, he's using military lingo, calling helicopters helos. And uh, I do think it is interesting what Deacon says just then about, you know, you know, it must be nice just cruising around in the shit, quoting Bible verses and shit, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. like like the, the horror and despair of this world just can't touch them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because they're sort of safe off in mm. whatever facility they're in, yeah. and they have the helos, and they, you know, occasionally come out into the shit to do what well, seems like pretty dirty work, you know, like gathering samples and whatnot. But it's <laughs> freaker shit, like yeah, <laughs> digging minutes. in freaker yeah, shit. Three minutes, and then they're off back to, you know, yeah. take a shower. And, and, and heavily armored up. and heavily protected and able to hop in yeah. a helicopter and, you know, rise above the filth and the desolation and the despair. At, yeah. at a moment's notice and not actually have to be in it like everybody else. Okay. <clears throat> now we have another story mission. Oh, look, we have two. Nice. I could use a hand. <laughs> I love this mission uh, to go check on Boozer. I could use a hand. Uh, and then we have a bounty mission here that is a uh, main story mission. So what do you say... Let's loop back around to the north side of the Lost Lake camp and hit this mission. And then we'll take mm -hmm. this little land bridge south here and go in to do the Help a Boozer mission. Sound cool? Sure. All right, let's do yeah. that. So we'll so select. In the chat, we have Zach Joker Gaming says, hello, guys. How are you today? Zach, what's going on, man? Hello. Hello and welcome. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, and then uh, Quasimodo. Uh, thanks, Quasimodo. I appreciate that. He says, OMG, using the roof to spy on Nero. That's brilliant. Yeah, that is that is my favorite way to handle that particular mission. Like, I don't have a clever method figured out for all of those Nero stealth missions, but there, there are a few of them that are set up just so that it's easier to do them. Quasi also says, what's funny is this woman talking about the, the Nero scientist is clearly an incredibly intelligent person, someone who is glad for the apocalypse because it's cleaned up much of the old world that she doesn't care about. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Can you stop by? And then Zylox says the yeah, only other character quoting the Bible is the uh, Colonel, okay. and mm -hmm. we don't have And misquoting <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, most of the yeah, time. Yeah, I don't even know if he's oh. read the Bible. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Zylock is with us tonight. What's going on, man? Hello. Or I say man. I actually don't know by the username if uh, Zylock is... Uh, I don't know the correct pronoun here. I just say man a lot. So I hope I don't offend anybody with that one. That's just how I talk. That's just how we talk around here. No, why? Before he ran, he stole two bags of seed. We need those seeds. Okay. We need to know where he sold them or stashed them. You're making my day a lot more complicated. We have okay, fine. Selby Miser, Richie, hey, Richie, and Miranda Sutton. Hello. Hey, hello and welcome. Hi, Miranda. How's it going, girl? All right, so this mission, this is one of those motorcycle chase missions, and it's one of the few, actually, I'd have to say it's the only motorcycle chase mission where I don't always use the BFG because the guy is going to spawn like right in here somewhere and you've got very limited window of opportunity to take a shot because once he gets about right here uh, he's got you know all of this is this is obstructing your view you really can't get a good shot uh, all the way until I mean, shit literally there's only a few seconds here and there where you can even take a shot at him uh, so we will probably just go ahead and chase him down we've got the SMP9 we've got ammo for it hey look I'm going to go ahead and pick up the screen ammo tin. Are you proud of me? What do we got? <laughs> you feeling okay? I did that just for you. 
New year, new you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, new year, new me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's go get him. So Zylok says uh, that's actually his DJ name, and it it, it is uh, a guy. Zylok is a guy. Um, he's on. Oh, right on. I did wonder if the MD was drum and bass. They also could huh. mean anything else. I did not catch that. Oh shit! See, I've already fucked it up. We're probably gonna fail this one and just restart it. I know, right? You know, I actually have been trouble with my driving tonight. I don't have know why. Have you played this game before? <laughs> no, apparently not. I uh, I really don't know Charlie's why. Escaping. You should probably get out those trees. <laughs> yeah, trees are dumb. I don't like trees. Casing, hmm. oh, hello. He hey, Casing, what's going on? We need to know where he sold them or stashed Hang on. them. You're making my day a lot more complicated. Apparently, we're okay, entertaining Zylok uh, while well, he cleans the bottom is. of his oven with vinegar. <laughs> Sounds okay. like a, a tough job. For real, though, yeah. All right, we're going to try something a little different this time. This guy's pissing me off. Alive? Alive? Oh, come on. No, why? Oh, Zalek, you're from London. Awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah. How long did you live in London, Claire? I was there for six years. Cool. Uh, and I loved it. It's one of my, well, uh, pretty much my favorite place that I've ever lived. Really? Um, yeah, I love London. I love my... I'm going to go on... Can I go on a little bit of a, a, a geek tangent? I think so you one better. Of the things, aside from video games, one of the things I love... Um, I love civil engineering, I love architecture, and I love the history of the rough parts of London, like the East End. I used to live in the East End, and um, one of my favorite, in fact, my favorite nonfiction book is Down and Out in Paris and London by George Orwell, which is all about just the slums in East London. Um, oh, in yeah, the, yeah. It was written in like the 30s, I think the, the book was written. Okay. But I used to live on Bethnal Green Road, which is right by Brick Lane and Shoreditch and uh, Jack the Ripper territory. Ooh, so I know a lot about the history nice. of that. And it's fucking, I love it. And the great thing about London is the streets have not changed. Yeah. The buildings may have changed. Buildings sure. get knocked down. The and facade resort, of the buildings, of things like that. Yeah. There's so many like cool little alleyways and twisting little streets and, and just, it still is just thick with that atmosphere mm -hmm. um it's uh oh i miss i is actually from detroit <laughs> i just noticed that in the in the chat um but uh but yeah anyway london i could go on for eight ages about this uh <laughs> london is badass and i love it <laughs> does it still look like um, ac syndicate <laughs> yes yes I, I actually didn't have to use the map in assassin's creed syndicate i just knew where i was going <laughs> wow okay like for real like no shit no shit right on okay got a badass over here yeah jeremy you know what's up brother <laughs> uh, okay so let's see if we can do this i i've actually never tried this method before with this mission let's see what happens i hope i put the bombs in the right spot gotcha oh shit there he is You're shitting me, right? Got everybody but him. <laughs> that should at least make it a little bit easier. Damn it, Lynch man, come on! It's a nice attempt. Oh, yeah, we tried. It was a, kind of a waste of bombs, but it's okay. Let's go get him. Oh, Miranda Satin says uh, to Quasi, congrats on your podcast premiere. He was on the podcast last week. Yeah, it was. Tonight. Um, she says, really enjoyed your combo with Claire. It was like listening to Listening in on two friends talking about uh, all video games. And that's really what I try to do with the podcast, is just talk to people who love Days Gone and video mm -hmm. games. Yeah. Just have a good kind of a casual conversation. Going, Lynch man. Huh. What is the there he goes with that rope in his pocket again, man. Look at this guy. Fuck you. Thought you just killed a couple guys right change. off with our shit. Don't matter. Yeah, fair enough. To your dying starvation because you got what you need. I mean, right? if you know, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Get off of me, you son of a bitch. 
Hey, 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 listen to me. Rick is gonna send some men for you. You tell them where you stash. Wouldn't it make more sense to just like carry some handcuffs in his pocket or something? I mean zip ties or something. Like something, yeah. I mean zip ties might be a little bit might be a little bit more difficult to come by in the apocalypse, but he does have zip ties on the motorbike. On the bike, on the, this is true. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Does he have the seeds the on fall. his bike? No, no, I didn't see him. All right, we'll bring him in. Lost Lake out. Well, this actually worked out perfectly because we stopped right here at the little one of the little land bridges going into camp, so... Yeah, I'm honestly not sure why, but my driving has been a bit off tonight. I don't know what it is. You controller? No. Out of practice? I think somebody's been fucking with my controller. Somebody else been somebody, somebody else been using my controller. I don't know about you, but... Uh... <laughs> oh, Miranda says the audio is cutting out a little. Is it really? Uh, on my end, everything appears perfect on the audio. Oh, Zylok says it's uh, it's the whiskey that's causing your driving problems. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that could be, man, but I, I honestly haven't had that much tonight. I, I guess it's possible. Will I be able to play Jeremy piano? Makes, Jeremy makes Very a good funny. point. William, Rope has many more down. uses. Zip ties have more mechanical implications, and handcuffs have no, one use. Better for camps. I mean, handcuffs have... Several uses, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and <you can> see, <laughs> Maybe that's just me. I wouldn't know anything about that. Shit. Like I said before, William really does owe you his life. Boozer doesn't owe me shit. I owe him. Hey, I saved ah, two more. Miranda says it might just be Eddie her internet. Fuck Spectrum. <laughs> I just thought you should know. I think we got the OBS situation figured out from last week. Uh, you know, honestly, whatever I, was going on with the frame rate. Yeah, whatever was going on seems to be better because I actually didn't do anything. Um, just it didn't oh, even take the credit for it. Take oh the yeah, it was totally it. me. Yeah, I, I'm a total Jordan badass. Yeah, everything. I'm a total <laughs> badass. I got I man, I spent all fucking week working on that. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't I didn't get to enjoy any of my weekend. That's all I did was sat here fucking around with OBS trying to get that fixed. Uh, so I've always thought this part was interesting here. How, this far into the story is when you unlock Boozer's shotgun. I have always thought, because Boozer's shotgun, comparatively speaking, is not a good shotgun when you compare it to other weapons that you could have by this point in the story. Um, so I've always thought it would, would have been better if Boozer's shotgun unlocked, let's say, after you take the sterile bandages to Boozer. You know, because he's laying there, he's he's laid up in the camp, his arms messed up, and, uh, you know, you bring him the bandages, and at that point, that should be when this shotgun unlocks, in my I mean, opinion. You have it earlier, and then there's that weird, awkward story moment where Booz is like, give me my shotgun Give back. it back, which yeah. Which I guess makes mm -hmm. sense, because you need the scene in which he pulls the shotgun on Deacon. That is true. Okay, so that's a good one, yeah. To the arms. Yeah, um, that is true. And also, I think as you come into Lost Lake, there's the point where he pulls it on, uh, where he pulls it on uh, Ricky as well. Right. Yeah. So important announcement in the chat. What do we have? Me uh, and Quasi are going to have a new neighbor. Prissy is coming to California in five weeks. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Right on, girl. Awesome. Well, I hope that works out for you, kiddo. Yeah. I feel like we're going to have a little stream uh, friend group meetup or something <laughs> at some point oh, in the yeah, future. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, y'all should totally hang out if you're going to be close enough. Fucking A. Yeah. Yeah. Never know who you might see at something like that. Bunch of fucking internet weirdos. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's. Uh, what is this one? I prefer the term "internet nerds." Oh, internet nerd! Is it not? Weird? But I thought yeah. you were a professional weirdo. I mean, isn't that literally? Isn't that weirdo. literally on your business card? 
<laughs> I mean, I thought that was literally on your business card, is it not? I mean, I actually, I, I have made a name for myself being a weirdo, being a, a um, yeah, that weirdo who collects vintage Ouija boards, oracle <laughs> cards, magical grimoires from the 16th century. Um, what else do I have? Uh, books about the Marquis de Sade. Um, and I have, I have all this stuff. I have these really cool shelves. Right Marquis de Sade. Who is that again? Refresh my memory. I'm not too up on. Uh, I'm not too up on French revolutionary characters. Uh, he is most well known for lending his name to sadism. So he's basically the inventor of BDSM and kink. I mean, I'm sure it was happening before he invented it, but he he got in a lot of trouble. That's my kind of guy. Life, but more, spent more than half his life uh, in prison um, because he was. Uh, yeah, very oh, look, Psylocke um, knows what's up. Yeah. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, you know, man. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Oh, um... <laughs> so I have, uh, just to, to, to clarify why I have a book collection about the Marquis de Sade, I have a TV project that's all about him. Yeah, that's totally why. Collection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that, yeah. <laughs> and I have a Marquis de Sade tattoo as well. Wait, what? <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Okay, so um, what we're going to do here uh, on this mission, this is the one where uh, uh, this is where Ricky wants to take Deacon to the, uh, she wants to go skinny dipping with Deacon and take him to the lake by the uh, hydroelectric power plant. So I've, if this is okay, this is going to take a minute to set up. So I want to make sure if everybody's okay with this, what I've really wanted to do is go into this mission with a bunch of bombs set up in advance because when Deacon and Ricky go do this mission, a shitload of rippers spawn and I've always, I've never tried this, but what I've always wanted to do is set up a whole bunch of bombs uh, so that when the rippers spawn in, they spawn right on top of all the bombs. But here's the thing. That's how Spawnicus Rex. That is how Spawnicus Rex likes to get down. Um, so, I think that's really what I want to do. Um, but what I'll need to do is I'll need to swing by the hidden loot locations and pick up some more bombs uh, because we kind of just wasted those. So, I mean, we have two options here. I can load my save game from before we did that bike chase mission and wasted those fucking bombs, uh, or mm -hmm. we can actually run around and collect some more uh, proximity mines. Uh, so I, I'm down for whatever that I really want to try this. I want to see if we can pull it off in the stream tonight, but it's going to take a little setup time. Uh, it's going to take a little time to get things in position properly. Yes, I do it. And while you do that, I can finish my story because I didn't get to say. Oh, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> the Go ahead. point of me describing why oh, I'm a, a weirdo. Um, so I have, you can see on my Instagram, on the Days Gone Pod Instagram, there's a few photos of me where you see the blue shelving, um, kind of wall of shelves behind my desk. Hey, mm -hmm. And I have all you been? my, you know, books and, and various things going? on there. Um, my Ouija board collection and things like that. And since the pandemic, I've been taking all of my meetings via Zoom, so by video calls. And so when I jump on a uh, a video call, like something? people immediately see all Pause. the stuff behind me, and it's it's a great conversation starter, but it does freak some people out when they see all the <laughs> weird shit that I have. Um, so around. yeah, definitely, I write uh, mostly uh, horror, sci-fi, and then anything I call anything dark, anything weird. So I have, you know, like I said, the French Revolution, Marquis de Sade project. Um, I've kind of become a little bit known, sort of building a little bit of a niche for myself. That I have a, a really, um, a really good way of getting into the minds of terrible people, and writing stories about terrible people. So like the Marquis de Sade was, uh, mm -hmm. he was not a good man. As interesting as he is, yeah. he was not in any <laughs> he way. He might have been bad. a bit of a sadist. I mean, yes, uh, <laughs> but like, there's kink, and then there's, you know, rape and torture and. Things that cross the line. Yeah, and so obviously, sure. you know, to, sure. to make a TV show about someone like that is very difficult and, and very questionable. So um, I like to think that I kind of found a way to make it work um, and make it uh, a good way to, a good window through which we can explore the idea of 
liberty and consent and yeah. Yeah, one thing, sexual freedom and things like that. One thing I've always found interesting about the Marquis de Sade is, uh, you know, that, like you said, the, um, the freedom. Uh, and it's like, you know, so it's like he has that perspective of I want to do this to you, but you don't want this done to you. So where does my freedom begin and your freedom end? You know, exactly. it's a very yeah. interesting perspective, I think. Yeah. About the nature of freedom itself. Um, mm hmm. Let's see. I need to swing by some of the other hidden loot locations. I'm trying to remember which ones have proximity mines. While you do that, I'm going to answer some more things in the chat. So, Casing says, isn't the I-5 the highway where the hordes travel up from California? Yes, that is correct. Is it? Um, okay. And actually, uh, sorry, he mentioned the I-5. Just remember, stay off the I-5 if the zombie apocalypse ever starts. Um, Casing, are you in LA? Do you know the five? Uh... Because he's also saying stay off the 405 anytime you can avoid it. I find the 5 is worse than the 405. Hmm. People, people, I think people who live on the uh, the east shit on the 405 and people who live on the west side shit on the 5. I mean, they're all terrible. And then people who live in the valley, I think, shit on the, the one time. And then all the homeless people there just shit wherever they want to. Pretty much, yeah. Sounds like Addy. How's the arm? Ah, of course, he's going to be in central California. Ah, oh, yeah. okay. Sorry, We're going to be Seriously, overrun within minutes. Well, actually, I don't know. Central California is not as populated. It depends where. Where yeah, exactly you're going to be. Said, yeah, pretty much. I think if you're in California and the zombie apocalypse happens, we're all fucked. <laughs> right. And I don't think it'd be the zombies that kill most people. Yeah, or, right. Yeah. I, I gotta get going. Skizzle's got me on farm duty. Gotta see if I can uh, pay off. So about that Marquis de Sade tattoo. <laughs> you can see it on my Instagram. It's on my hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have the word Marquis tattooed on my right hand. I don't know why, but I was imagining something a bit more extreme. Why are you that? Okay, so I think that is all of the hidden loot locations in this area that have uh, proximity mines. There are... At least two more. I know there's one here. Actually, where we're headed. I guess we could just pick that one up when we get there. And then there's one here. I am totally turning this conversation into uh, talking about LA traffic. That's how you know you <laughs> live in, in <laughs> California. <laughs> so, Cal, if you just talk about fucking traffic. So, both Richie and Quasi say the 91 is the worst freeway. I, I guess I don't use it all that often, but hmm. every morning and every evening there's always an accident on the 91. Yeah, let's go ahead and put this around. I, I, I don't really think of the 91 as being a bad fruit. Now I'm going to pay attention to that when I watch uh, morning news and, and get the traffic report. And come back next week for my, uh, my <laughs> breakdown of <laughs> yeah. traffic in LA. Now for Claire with the weather and the traffic report. <laughs> oh, Chrissy, yeah, you absolutely have to bring Finn to Disneyland. Oh, yeah, yeah, right on. Yeah. That sounds cool. I'm down, down to Disneyland. We'll all hang out. We'll do a, a feedback loop party or something. Headhunters in the chat. Hello. Hey, Hunter. Here. What's going on, bud? Glad you could make it. This thing points out New York would be scary to be stuck in a zombie, zombie apocalypse. Yeah, for real. Yeah, see, man, I'm, I'm from Texas, so when we're talking about traffic, all I have to worry about is, is there a dead possum in the road today? <laughs> Ibby Quail says, hey stream, hello Hey, what's going on Ibby? Haven't seen you in forever, how you been? Jeremy is saying, so short story I'm oh, trying to shit. help my youngest son play the newest Ratchet and Clank and I keep pressing the Days Gone menu, weapon select and mouth buttons, I feel both proud <laughs> and ashamed <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I've I, I gotta say similar. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Ghost of Tsushima uh, multiplayer, and when I'm playing Days Gone and I try to enter crouch or sneak mode, I keep hitting the button for crouch from Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> In uh, Ghost of Tsushima, crouch is the touch the touchpad button in the center, uh, and of course in Days Gone it's the circle, the red circle, and so instead of hitting the red circle to go into crouch, I keep hitting the fucking touchpad button. It's like, dude, it's not Ghost of Tsushima. Get your shit together, man. 
feel like I press PlayStation buttons just in real life, just for everything. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I want to open this door, press X. No, how about you just move the door? Yeah, I really would. Yeah, like I said, weirdo. Random sentences. She, uh, she has dead skunks on the roads over here. Oh wow! Skunks, they're, they're stinky, right? If you drive yeah, past on those, yeah, yeah. Especially if their scent gland has been ruptured. Uh, so I have a, a <laughs> funny Texas story. Uh, years ago, I moved to a nice little house out in the country. I, I don't, for, unfortunately, I don't live there right now, but I moved to a nice little house out in the country. And in order to give people directions how to get to my house, it was literally turned left at the second dead skunk, not the first dead skunk, the second dead skunk. <laughs> that was literally how I gave directions to my house when when I first moved in. When, Were you uh, skunk? Skunk, skunk, I want to say skink for the plural of skunks. Is that the is plural? It, is it, no, I just want to say That's that what you want to say? Skunk, okay, I see. Sounds wrong. Um, do, you have, yeah, do you have skunk in Texas? Oh, yeah, skunks? fucking I mean, A. Obviously. Especially in like the more uh, rural areas, absolutely. I saw one here once. They're so cute. Did you? Yeah, yeah they're actually, um, I mean, they look almost like a, a funny-looking cat, almost. Yeah. In fact... I don't know why exactly, but the nickname for a skunk is a pole cat. I don't know why. I thought that was a natural animal. It may be. <laughs> Quasi says I think the plural of skunk is skank. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I know it's not. It's not actually skink because a skink is a type of lizard. Or right. Kind of like a gecko-like thing. There we go. I had almost forgotten that those guys were going to be there. More bounties. Uh, Chrissy says, but we all know that the raccoon trash panda is the supreme ruler of the night. Hell yeah. I once got <laughs> mugged by a gang of raccoons. Do you want to hear the story? <laughs> Fuck yeah, it I was... want to hear how you got mugged by a gang of raccoons. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. I actually thought I was going to kill I mean, I hadn't okay, realized so... <laughs> that that was an aggressive species. <laughs> you didn't know? Like, well, maybe it's LA. The fucking badass. So, I am an innocent Brit. That's just, there's nothing that wants to kill you in England. Nothing that wants to fuck you up. Everything is just cute and fluffy. Nothing smells bad. Nothing's going to bite you. Sure. We don't have skunk, skink, skank. We don't have um, raccoons. We don't, I mean, I guess we have foxes, but they keep to themselves. Um, so we used to have, or we still have a bunch of stray cats in this neighborhood. Um, but I used to, I'm such a sucker for animals. I love animals uh yeah don't you rescue rescue, rescue yeah, cats and I, stuff yeah rescue cats I, I saw an injured possum today when i was at the park and uh contemplated that like well I actually stopped to like think do i need to save this uh i need to i've oh, got spam bots one second and... yeah i got two badass moderators tonight right on handle them spam um, bots don't take no shit oh, yeah, off them sorry, spam bots I'm... Chrissy, sorry to step on your toes. I just that was automatic. I just saw it pop oh. up and I was like, oh, shit, 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 shit. Hey, man, y'all um, see my driving tonight? I really think somebody's been drunk. fucking with my controller, man. Are you drunk? No, I, I actually I'm really not. I mean if if I were intoxicated, I wouldn't be joking about it, but I'm really not. I promise I'm not. Maybe ah, uh, that's need I to be need drunk? to be. Yes, that's what it is. Here, you're hang on. Also me... driving at night. Uh, do you? Are you okay? That's what it is. Yeah, that's. Well, you know, I'm old and my night vision is starting to fail me, so I, ha I have trouble seeing at night. Mm. <laughs> like what, 60, 70 years old? Something oh, at like least that. shit. Maybe more than that. I I lost count at like fifty. When people ask me how old I am, I always tell them I lost count at 200. <laughs> <laughs> They're always yeah. like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, the centuries so, blend together at 200. Yeah. So back to my getting mugged, cause my dumb ass <laughs> getting, getting mugged, mugged by raccoons. By raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> so, I used to put out food for these stray cats. There are, I, I don't do that anymore because it's bad to encourage them, but I was yeah. a sucker for a while and I put out just, you know, dry. Wait, you did what now? Put out dry food. Oh, dry food. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Like like kibble food. Um, that's what I call it. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, 
and I heard a noise on the. We I used to put it on the driveway outside the kitchen window, and I heard this noise. And I was like, "What is? What is happening?" I look out the window. I see a raccoon, and I'm like, "Oh, cute! The raccoon is coming to eat the cat food." And I had this Tupperware tub that had the food in it, the kibble inside it. And this raccoon is like trying to open the Tupperware box. So I run out because I'm all fucking hype because I'm like never seen a raccoon. Well, I guess I'd seen a raccoon, but I still got like super hype about it. I'm like, there's a raccoon on my driveway. This is so cute. I love raccoons. So I run out and I'm, I'm going to, you know, open this thing and feed it. And I get out there and it's not one raccoon. It's five raccoons. <laughs> Only I don't see all of them to begin with, I just see a couple, and so I go and, and this raccoon, it's like I'm trying to take the Tupperware oh, away later. from it, so I can open it to give it the food, <laughs> and the raccoon is looking at me like, if you fucking take this food, I'm gonna fucking cut you. <laughs> and I get the tub, and I look to my left and see another raccoon, and I look to my right and see another raccoon, and then I hear a noise behind me, and there's a raccoon coming up behind me. It was like fucking Jurassic Park, you know, the clever girl uh, with uh, the raptors. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. And then they start growling. Oh, shit. They growled at me. They and I growl was like, oh, at you. Now... I, Oh my god, I'm going to die. So I just popped the lid off, dumped a bunch of food out, and then I was like, shit, <laughs> how do I get out of here? Because they've literally got me surrounded. I had a moment of panic, I will admit. I did have a moment wow. of panic. I managed to extricate myself from the situation. <laughs> because at the end of the day, they are just fucking raccoons. But for a split second, I did uh, kind of question my life choices. And <laughs> yeah. it's fucking As hilarious. Said, it's the day Claire realized that raccoons aren't all that cute. Yes, yeah, right. Uh, now, could could you um, could you repeat that entire story for me? Because I'm sorry, I quit listening when you said you put out. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, let me catch up with the chat because I've seen. Yeah, all what's up, chat? <laughs> and I have been ignoring it to tell my stupid raccoon story. <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, Miranda had to deal with a dead skunk. You so oh, in, wait in the basement? Oh yeah. shit! I, I've dealt okay. with dead mice trapped in the walls and under the kitchen counters and stuff, and that's just mice. They don't. Mm -hmm. They're not skunky, stinky. Um, yeah, dead, dead things for three weeks. Not good. Damn it. Tom Manon, I feed half a dozen raccoons every night. Fucking A. Oh, That's right awesome. on. Okay. Do they try to mug you, or or are you feeding them voluntarily? <laughs> are, are, you, are you okay? Do we need to send help? <laughs> <laughs> are they holding you hostage? Yeah, blink are, are the raccoons... Yeah, blink help. three times if the raccoons are holding you You're hostage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on the by basement, I mean crawl space. Almost no way to get to it. Yeah. Mm, damn. Okay, starting to get a feel for the bike again. Uh, there are there are places in Asia. You know, you have cat cafes here, like where you can go and like pay money to get a coffee in like a cafe, but they have cats roaming around. You can like play hmm, with cats. That's interesting. Um, in Asia, they have raccoon cafes where they have like. I quotes friendly yeah, trash pandas. Can go yeah. Huh. Richie says, I'll take on a group of ragers than a group of raccoons. <laughs> yeah, at least ragers aren't as smart. <laughs> you can kite them around. Raccoons will just outsmart you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. There's always more raccoons I didn't think than of you this. realize. Hang on, I, okay. I have one flaw in my uh, in my theory here. So the problem that I have right now, uh, yeah, getting back to days gone. <laughs> uh, the problem that I have right now is I'm afraid if I set these bombs at if I set these traps at night, random freakers will wander in. So uh, I, I had kind of uh, committed to not sleeping and making it daytime at all in this playthrough. However, to pull this off. I am going to go ahead and camp for the night. We'll make it first light, and then we will come put out these bombs. So I'm disappointed. Uh, Ma'am, there's a specific purpose for this. I'm headed to my bunk for a specific reason. You're going to be in your bunk? Well, I mean, you, I mean, didn't you say something about the Marquis de Sade? So it's like, <laughs> fuck yeah. Uh, Chrissy says that she secretly planted catnip on her apartment complex, fucking hell yeah, to attract cats. 
<laughs> Let's get the cats high, man. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so behind with the chat. I'm sorry. Um, Come on, step it up, chump. I mean, uh, no, you're doing a great job. Oh man, this is a group of raccoons is called a gaze. A gaze, which it's seems gaze. accurate because of the way they look at you. Mmm. Well, they more stare. Yeah, right. Menacingly. So are we going to call them a stare food. instead, or is, is it, are we sticking with so. gaze? An aggressive stare of raccoons. Yeah, they have an intense gaze. <laughs> yeah. He says, years of playing soccer paid off, and with a clear display of dominance, Claire punted the closest and biggest raccoon off the porch. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's really... Wait, Miranda says there's an owl cafe? There's a... There are owl Wait, cafes? Wait, what? I don't know about owls, man, because they just kind of fly around and shit on whatever they want to shit on. And oh, an owl... Owls are Ooh. Oh, owls are and fucking can, like, badass apex predators, man. Did you know yeah. that when an owl dives to snatch its prey, it is completely silent. There is no sound. Perfect really fucking cool predator. A, a, a really cool picture on the internet. It was of a um, rabbit tracks in snow. Mm -hmm. And the tracks just yeah. suddenly stopped with the imprint of wings. Oh, yeah. I've seen some shit like that where uh, some sort of bird of prey just swoops down and snatches up the innocent little hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bad motherfuckers. Okay, so just this once for a specific purpose. We're going to camp until morning, and uh, then we're going to go set those traps before we start that mission with Ricky. I'm really curious to see how this is going to work out. Hmm. I was ready to go back at it. Still trying to catch up. <laughs> the chat. I'm so behind. I'm sorry. Hey, here's Tom Manon. Welcome to the chat, Tom. What's going on, buddy? What does Tom say? Used to get stoned with the raccoon. He was funny stoned. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I'd love to see a, a fucking stoned raccoon. <laughs> I'm sorry, were you about to say something? No, I was just getting rid of another spam bot. Oh, okay, yeah. Man, fuck those spam bots. Okay, so... And you know you're doing a good job when the spam bots arrived. Yeah, right on. I, I, I just don't understand these spam bots. Like, I don't know what they... It's doing. Yeah, it's like it's not even anything interesting, man. I mean, it's not even like a cool porn bot or whatever. Trying to spam you with porn <laughs> links. Send me a good link or something. Yeah, right. Send me something interesting. Fuck. <laughs> Psylocke says owls, the Marquis de Sade of the animal world. <laughs> Apex fucking predator. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm I'm all caught up. All right. Good girl. Oh, yeah. Richie has started streaming. I said he oh, hey. Yeah. Oh, is Richie, with us, Richie with yeah, us tonight? Richie with us tonight? Hey, what's going on, Richie? What's up, man? Um, Richie, what game are you streaming? Is it Days Gone or is it something else? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a save, uh, like an actual hard save before we attempt this. And let's start planting some bombs, man. So uh, if anybody knows the spawn points for the Rippers, hit me up. Uh, in the chat there, I know, I feel like I know most of them. I know a Ripper Heavy spawns right here on top of this car. I know a couple of them spawn in this area over here. I don't know exactly where. There's generally one or two of them right over here somewhere. So I'm they just going to... They tend to run to the right of that brick building towards you. Yes, correct. Um, and we'll be moving up that way in, in just a moment. Yes, absolutely. I know there's usually one that kind of tries to take cover behind these dumpsters here. So I want to cover that. I think there's one like around here that's just kind of being an asshole over here somewhere. So we'll put one there just for fun. I know there are a couple. This is where I'm not certain of their spawn points. There are a couple that are kind of in this area over here. 
So you can always pick up the bombs if they don't get set off as well. You can, yeah. But what I, what I really want to do is see if I can get all of the rippers uh, with just sniper spawns on top of one. Yes, of the Yes, on top of the brick building down there. Absolutely correct. Yes, uh, and I'll definitely be putting a proximity mine in that area as well. Yeah. So uh, Richie is currently streaming Days Gone. Uh, is that on your Selby Miser channels? How do we find you? Richie, give us the info. Yeah, uh, if the, I don't know if the, I mean, like, I don't have any restrictions on putting links in the chat. So if you are able to put a link in the chat for us, go for it, man. Yeah, go ahead and link your stream there. And uh, and do you have, like, a regular schedule or anything? Like, when when can we watch you? Yeah, yeah, hook us up. I mean, we know you're chill, then, so we know I we know you're chill, so I don't mind you promoting your stream on here. That's perfectly okay. And then Headhunter um, says, "I've been like stay for as long as I can for the stream. I'm still trying to get this place together for when Grandpa gets home from the hospital. How's your Grandpa doing? I was I just about to ask. Okay. How how is Grandpa? How's he doing? Oh, so uh, Richie streams on Twitch at just underscore Richie. Hmm. Okay, cool. That's, that's in the chat. He says, thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, so if thanks anybody wants to check that out, go ahead. Uh, we follow Richie on Instagram. Yeah. And, uh, and he follows us as well, so. And I know Richie. Oh, that's someone you know personally, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. right on. Cool guy. Lucky guy, yeah. All right, so... I, I don't know exactly where to place them over here. I know that some enemies spawn over here, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put some random shit on the ground and let's see what happens. I know we've got okay, so we've got the Ripper Heavy that spawns on top of the car right there. We've got these ones that spawn over here, kind of close to the bike. Uh, I did put one on top of the roof to cover the sniper that spawns up there. I've got one kind of over here. I think there are some enemies that kind of take cover behind this uh, thing right here. And I know... Oh, I just thought of another spot. Uh, I know there's a ripper that always comes... Uh, there's a guy with a shotgun that always comes around right here. He tries to flank Deacon and Ricky from the right. So I put one there for him. And then there are a couple of others that spawn in this area over here somewhere. So let's see what we can do about them. Okay, so y'all have seen me setting these up. Uh, does anybody have some more? I've got, how many do I have? I have? Three more. Actually, I can make more of these. So I have plenty of the proximity bombs. Does anybody have an idea for another spot where I need to plant a bomb? Anything I missed? Anything like that? And Hunter says his grandpa's gotten a lot better. He's a tough 87-year-old. Damn it, boy. All right, well, good. We're glad he's doing better. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm not seeing any more locations popping up in the chat, so let's leave it at that. Uh, now that I have planted the bombs, we're going to make, we're going to overwrite that hard save that we just made. And now we're going to head back to Lost Lake Camp and we're going to start this mission and see what happens. We're going to see how bad I fucked up on my bomb placement. <laughs> uh, Chrissy says, Rex, I believe you only need a shot for good luck. Oh, right on. Here we go. Cheers, everybody. Got more spam balls. Man, that's some right. good whiskey. So I'm still drinking oh, that. Okay, good job. Thank you, ladies. Man, I swear to God, I got some badass moderators, don't I? I genuinely, genuinely, sincerely feel fortunate uh, to have the moderators that I have. Like, I, I got so lucky with Chrissy popping up in the streams. Um... Uh, being yeah, really... I don't count myself as a moderator. Chrissy's, yeah, because we're just doing that. Got this. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're just doing that for these feedback loop live streams because, I mean, <laughs> you kind of are obligated to be here for these streams, so <laughs> it only makes sense that you should uh, moderate on them. I feel like I'm Chrissy's assistant. Yeah. Like, you know, she's the boss. Yeah. And maybe me and you both work for her. <laughs> it's Chrissy's dream. <laughs> she's in charge. Right. <laughs> Fawzi wants to know if you're still nursing the 1776. I fucking am, sir. Yeah. That's actually what I'm drinking right now. I, I haven't... It's odd, but actually the, through the holidays, I haven't taken like a single sip, actually. Christmas, New Year, none of that. I haven't had hardly any of my whiskey. I haven't had any fucking time to slow down and enjoy a little whiskey, so... Uh, yeah, I've still got shit. Probably a 
a third of this bottle left. You popped in with a uh, Arthur's joke, assistant to the moderator. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for real, and and I'm not just being nice here. I really do feel fortunate uh, to uh, have had Chrissy as a moderator in this on this channel. I got lucky there. Ah, shit! I was hoping I could get to the trees in time. Okay, what do we got? No, you don't. And I don't have my forking auto shotgun. Hey, that was a headshot, man. Yeah, of course I don't have the auto shotgun when I need a get off my lawn option. All right, where's that sniper at? Let's go get him. There you are, you rat fuck. I'm coming for you. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I love the way they ragged all out of the tree. <laughs> That's great. Okay, I do need a bandage or a med kit or something, though. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, always. Yo, Schmo says, Rex ever had redemption whiskey? Found it two weeks ago. Ah, I have actually heard of that, but I have not tried it. What is it? I'm over here nursing my Diet Coke, so... I'm... <laughs> it's just a brand of whiskey. <laughs> That's uh, Yeah, it's just a different brand of whiskey. They make really good whiskeys. Uh, no, I, I have not tried that one. I am familiar with the, uh, I am familiar with it, but I have not had an opportunity to try it. I'm still trying to find some of that stuff that, uh, Quasimodo recommended, the, uh, the Yellow Rose Rye. Because I am a big fan of a good rye whiskey, and Yellow Rose makes really good stuff. But I have not had an opportunity to try that one. I can't find it anywhere locally. I may have to special order it. Okay, so we're pretty good on health. We'll go ahead and push forward and try to start this mission. We'll see how bad I screwed up the placement of the mines. Like that, going with some confidence. See how bad you screwed yeah, up. Yeah, right? I mean, all <laughs> it takes is a, you know, a little confidence, tone of command. You're good to go, you know? The world is yours. I assumed with this group of uh, freaks here there was going to be a survivor rescue there, but I guess not. That's the only reason I stopped. It usually is. Every time I, I know, right? The car, yeah, quite often. Yeah. Stuck in there. Mm -hmm. Sure, quite often. Apparently, the redemption whiskey is good in. Sorry, absolutely wonderful in some eggnog. <laughs> I'm still. Absolutely I've never wonderful. tried eggnog. I saw this dude standing here ready to fight and then making like finger gun motions or something. <laughs> I thought he was one of the marauders, man. I was about to pop him in the head. <laughs> and it's inventory full. Actually, I could top off the hill a little bit. There we go. So since he's just going to be a fucking weirdo. See if he's got any loot on him. Nope. Rag. <laughs> so I know we did this a couple weeks ago, but who's pro eggnog and who's anti eggnog? Or never had it. <laughs> I like Which eggnog with spiced rum. Yeah? Yeah, I like eggnog with spiced rum. In particular, uh, anybody who does enjoy a good spiced rum, check out the Kraken black spiced rum <laughs> that is a bad motherfucker uh my brother uh green designs turned me on to that one that is some good shit man chrissy's negative on the eggnog richie has never tried it it's all right <laughs> if you like something rich and creamy in your mouth <laughs> uh, joe Schmo wants to know if you've ever had jim beam red snack I have not. I am a fan of uh, Jim Beam whiskey. I do like Jim Beam whiskey. I prefer Jim Beam over Jack Daniels. Uh, I like Jim Beam whiskey. I love the Jim Beam rye. They make a good, really good rye. And I think there's also a Jim Beam honey. That's nice. Uh, but I have not tried that one before. Jim Beam also makes a really good uh, barbecue sauce. Yeah, really good barbecue sauce. We've got Joe Schmo, Quasi, and Zylock all pro eggnog. Miranda Satin, ugh, eggnog. No thanks. 
Isn't it funny how there's like this this, this divide? You're either <laughs> it's, it's pro uh, or anti. What, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's a very divisive drink. <laughs> we have this thing in Britain called Marmite, uh, which hmm. they also have in Australia. Uh, is that true, Quasimodo? Wait, do they have, do they really have, have that in name? Australia? It, maybe it has a different name. It's hmm. Marmite, and there's oh, Quasi. What am I thinking of? I'm blanking right now. But that's very divisive. I think Australians tend to really like it. Um, but in England, it's like, it's either you love it or you hate it. There is no in-between. <laughs> well, Xylux says very divisive drink, absinthe. Yes, it is, yeah. Mm, Vegemite, Vegemite, that's what it's called. Oh, not the same as Marmite. Apologies, I didn't know. I just, I'm anti-Marmite. I fuck it, but it's, no. It's just no. <laughs> <laughs> It's like licorice or Bjork. You either love it or hate it. Yes! Huh. Now, what the fuck yes. is a Bjork? Bjork the... Oh, my God. You're such an old man. Um, <laughs> Bjork the singer. Oh, okay, okay. All right, I got you. Yeah. Man, if it, funny, ain't heavy, a, if it ain't heavy metal devil music, I've probably never heard of it. I have a funny Bjork story. Uh, how much do I want to give away on stream? Um, <laughs> I'll give it all away. So, my, my first time... <laughs> my first, first time taking acid. Um, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I dropped the tab and nothing was happening and I was like super hype for for taking acid and uh, it'd been well, about an hour. Yeah. And I'm like, shouldn't this be kicking in soon? Like, shouldn't this have kicked in already? And I was sitting in uh, I was at a house party and I was in someone's like upstairs in the bedroom or whatever, like sitting with some people just chilling out and. And we're all just like, oh, nothing's happening. Like, maybe this was bad LSD. And I just look over and there's a no Bjork such thing. poster. That uh, the the album cover from this would have been, I don't know, early, mid-90s. The, the one where it's like the pink background. And she's sort of got like her hands in kind of like a prayer pose or something like that. And um, it just struck me as hilarious. And it's it's not, there's nothing <laughs> funny about it. I was just like, oh, my fucking God, it's Bjork. And I just started cracking up. And I couldn't stop laughing for about half an hour. And then I realized, oh. The acid's kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been many, many years for me since I did anything like that. But back when we used to do acid and shit, uh, we used to have a name for that. There was Perma Smile, where like the next day your face hurts from smiling all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one time uh, we were doing some mushrooms and we were watching, I don't know if you know the Gene Wilder movie, Young Frankenstein, kind of a parody on yeah. Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's filmed in black and white intentionally. Of course, it's not an old black and white movie. It's just filmed in black and white to kind of mm -hmm. convey that feeling of the old uh the old Frankenstein movies. And we were, so we were doing some mushrooms and we were watching young Frankenstein. That movie was in full motherfucking color. <laughs> it was not black and white for us, man. It was in full color. <laughs> uh, That's funny. God damn young and dumb and full of terrible decisions. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, so let's go ahead and kick off the story mission. We do have a good story mission here. This is the one where Ricky and Deacon are going to ride north and activate the power, or at least attempt to activate the power by repairing the hydroelectric power plant. So let's kick that off, shall we? Hey, yeah. Let's actually talk about Days Gone for a job. minute. I know, right? Yeah. Mom, I, <laughs> what a novel idea. Marquis de Sade. <laughs> oh, let's talk about your boy Schizo for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, don't <laughs> let me don't let me talk over him, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm getting you to do it. I have to agree he is a very well written villain. I'm, I'm gonna give you that much. And you are the type of person you like to get into the mind of the bad boys, so I, I do find that interesting. I gotta go into the shit and he's coming. Look the look on Ricky's face. She's mm -hmm. like, for fuck's sake, fucking schizo. Fuck you, schizo, yeah, right. Like a whole body language. She's just like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna write this in fucking crayon for you. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> just so you can understand. <laughs> Schizo's like, gotta keep his cool and, you know, Seriously, I'm still in charge. North. Yeah, right. I'll let you. Yeah, get the I'll last word. Yeah, yeah. Come on, I'll show you. Right. <laughs> Fucking douche. I didn't do anything. Hey, no. About how if we seal the case My boy Schizo alone. No. <laughs> Poor so baby. You know, I just think I it's like, I think it's adorable that you let you'll stand up for your boyfriend like that, even though you know he's a douche, you know? That's just adorable. I mean, not just because of Boozer, but no. You gotta be loyal to your boy. Oh, honestly, I, I love Schizo because hey, he is a really well-written villain. Sure. And as someone who writes 
villainous characters and tries to get into their mindset. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about Schizo is that he wasn't just one dimensional, just an asshole. Like he has a really strong point of view that makes sense to him. He is not the villain of his story. He Are they ever saving Lost Lake? No, no one ever is. Um, it's uh, but yeah, I just I like because a lot of games, like there's a lot of video games, will just have kind of one dimensional antagonists. And I really liked that Schizo had dimension and and kind of actually made me think See, for a while. Back, like I we lost a man I was when down. the whole thing Shut about down, where he's trying to get Deacon on his side down. and. God, um, try to around. take over Lost Lake You're from Iron Mike. I was actually a little bit convinced. What you know, the whole, the Rippers are gonna break the treaty. It's like, well, yeah, the guy's got a point. Sure. See, we haven't had power for oh, shit, hang on years, one second. Uh, minor technical difficulties on my end. Not a big deal. Uh -oh. No, 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 we're all good. Give me just one second. Check out the hydro dam. Just, just well, I'll keep talking about Schizo. Yeah, go. Um, I, I know you will. <laughs> so, funny story. Funny story. Um, I, I'm going to give away something that I was going to keep secret for a long, 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 long time. I'm going to give it away right now. Uh oh. Uh, encoded in every MP3 of the podcast uh -oh. is a secret message. Say it ain't so. <laughs> and I just realized the, the uh, scene that we just watched. Um, Schizo mentions Marsh Duty. And um, this, I think it's this week's episode that drops in like an hour or so. Um, the secret encoded message is 626 Aussie, who's my guest uh, on the podcast this week and last week. Uh, he's on Marsh Duty. It's the secret encoded message. So if anyone knows how to find the secret encoded messages, um, have fun looking for those. Uh, they are in every episode, going back to the first, very first episode. The princess is in another castle. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually inspired by this old video game I used to play called Lemmings. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever played that one. It's a it's a great sort of puzzle solving. Um, I don't know if it counts. It's not a platform game. But it's like a two dimensional side view of just like a um, little. Uh, I don't know what to call it. Like a level. And um, you have a hundred lemmings that just want to like walk in one direction and will throw themselves off a cliff unless you stop <laughs> them. And your job is to kind of solve a puzzle in order to stop them killing themselves. Hmm, that's interesting. The, de the decoder start, ring is in the mail. Dark. <laughs> sure to drink your oval team. Oh, da <laughs> hey, Christmas story, right on. <laughs> Bonus points for the Christmas story reference. Uh, Dandy Denny uh, apparently has played lemmings. Hey! Yeah, right on. Yeah. on your map. There's some marauder camps up there we want to stay away from. Yeah, got it. So how did you end up out here? I never asked you. Same as everyone, I guess. When shit went down, I was 100 miles from home. By the time I got back, everyone was gone. Where are you from? I grew up in a little town outside of Portland. We work in the city, couch surf, go home on weekends. The big city. Yeah, right. Only in Oregon. What was it like over there? I mean, how did you, uh, how did you get out? I don't know. Luck, I guess. Oh, 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 oh going too far from Ricky. Keep up. Well, that Valley was a war zone. Everything happened so fast. I, I, I told my friends to get out when I left. Lemmings was the first game she ever played. Oh, wow. I, uh... I heard they nuked it. I've always thought this part was interesting yeah, where Deacon and Ricky are talking about did uh, did her hometown get nuked or not? And yeah. they're like, no, we would be experiencing fallout if so. Yeah. Me? No. Come on. And then she's telling him about, you know, her and Addie getting together. And she's like, what? You got a problem? And he's like, no. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. There is okay, some stuff in the sure mission logs. Um, that oh, yeah. Kind of like Listen, uh, I'm sorry. I wanted to stuff. point this out where, uh, yeah, one sec, Claire. Uh, he's talking about this is where uh, Ricky tells him, oh, it's nothing serious, me and Addie. And he said, uh, didn't look that way to me. Uh, so I've always thought that part of the conversation was really interesting. Uh, so I, I apologize for interrupting you. Please go ahead. I just no, really no, wanted to point that out. No, that's cool. Um, there is a lot of good stuff in, in the mission logs. Uh, after you complete a mission, 
If you go back into the progress or the story menu, you can read Deacon's uh, kind of conclusion or thoughts on the mission that you have finished. Yeah. And it adds a lot of story texture. And he talks a lot about Ricky because he rode with her for a couple of years or okay. about a year before they got to Lost Lake. And she stayed to be with Addy. Yes. And, to have a chance uh, at a normal cares. life, as she says. Yeah. yeah. Um, but one of the things that he talks about is how him and Ricky out in the shit when they were riding together through Tumalo um, was, it was in no way sexual. Yeah. Because I think he mentions, I can't remember if it's in the mission logs. That there's like it no safe right time for that at all. Yeah. Yeah, he says that he's like seen her naked or whatever, but it's like, that's no big deal. It's just, it is what it is. Like you yeah. see people naked when they're changing or whatever. And yeah. It's not sexual because there is no time for it. Yeah. You, you literally cannot drop the oh, guard for The apocalypse would suck, man. Man. Yeah. Yeah. All right, dam's coming up. Take it slow near the gate. No uh, Richie idea says, I'm surprised that the feds didn't there. solve the freakers with nukes. I mean, yes and no. Or the at least try. Yeah. Federal, the federal government, as far as we know, has completely collapsed. Yeah. The only remaining arm of the government is Nero. Nero, and all they want to do is research them and help them evolve into more powerful killers. And if we run into any, we're gone. Because they're kind of... Come on, I want to check the Or potentially behind it, or at least using it. Using the, the Freaker virus. Fuck. One of my bombs just popped. I know at least one just popped. Shit. I... Uh, oh, it won't let me go forward, will it? Will it let me go forward? I do not know which of the bombs popped. And since we are in this mission... I, uh, it won't let me place anymore. Sir, are you going to get on? He's not going to get up on there. Um, I think the one on top of the roof right here just popped. So the sniper is not going to have a proximity mine under him. What else did we lose? Okay, the one over there is still good. Huh, I think it was just the one on top of the building here where the sniper spawns. So the sniper will not have a, uh, bomb under him when he spawns on top of this roof here. I think that's the one that popped. Okay, let's go see what Ricky's doing. Yeah. I'm more worried about my bombs over here. You know, Spawnicus Rex don't give a shit about that other mess. I want to know what's up with my bombs, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, just getting back to the chat and the conversation about villains, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Schmo says, aren't there some bad guys who know Same they're bad the and just don't care? Not in this yeah. game, but like in Heath Ledger's Joker wasn't a hero mm. in his own mind. He just yeah. didn't care. That's true. Yeah. Um, well, you know, in, thinking, if, if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons, you have that one alignment, that character alignment known as chaotic evil. <laughs> you know, so, and, and like in Batman, you know, uh, oh, is it... Uh, Shit, I can't remember. Is it Michael Caine or is it Morgan Freeman that tells him, you know, some men just want to set the world on fire? Uh, it's um, Morgan. Those just want to no, watch the world burn. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Just want to watch the world burn. Exactly right. Yeah, you know. Uh, just... So, yeah, there are chaotic evil yeah. enemies who are just straight up even evil. But outside of outside of um, genre stuff or, or like really sort of hardcore uh, like psychopaths. Uh, if anyone's seen *Halt and Catch Fire*, the TV show about the mm. early game, uh, early days of the computer industry, and it's sort of fictional but set very much in the real world. Mm. Um, the character played by Lee Come Pace, um, uh, Joe. Ooh, I like Lee Pace. Yeah, is, badass. Okay. He he's right. amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you okay there? And he, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So he plays basically this guy who is an incredibly smart sociopath. And you almost, um, you see him at times, up this way. We're going all the way up to the top. Uh, you know, manipulating people and trying to just achieve a goal for himself. Mm. Then other times it's like he kind of gets in his own way and self-sabotages. So it's an interesting look into the idea of, of when you are a sociopath or when you are 
kind of a bad guy that you can also, you're not just destroying other people's lives or, or whatever, manipulating other people. You actually turn your own sort of, air quote, superpower on yourself. Hmm. And that idea of like self-sabotage and self-destruction being very much tied in with being a, dis a destructive, chaotic, evil person. Like, oh, wow. you're not yeah. untouched by that. Right. You're not immune to your own chaos. Damn. Yeah, right. That's actually pretty badass. I'm going to have to watch that. That sounds cool. Wow, I am a fan of Lee. Hey, I am a fan of Lee Pace's acting. Um, that sounds like a really interesting character, and I can see with you know your uh, your your passion for the bad boys as well written villains. Uh, I, uh, that does sound interesting. Actually, I have to check that out. So, I'm up. Oh, and then the conversation turns to Carlos. Uh, um, and if yeah, he yeah. is uh, sort of okay. counts as someone who sees themselves as a villain oh, or the hero of their own story. Yeah. Um, and I definitely think uh, who, hang on, I'm scanning back through the chat. Yeah. Uh, I, and Joe I have Schmo a, says, I have a question I want to answer here in a second when we get a chance. Yeah. Sure. Joe Schmo says, um, that, uh, from what he remembers, though. Carlos actually believes the cult Run stuff. And yeah, that's, turbine. that's true. I, I, I think from what we're told in the game, um, he definitely has kind of, on down the rabbit hole of, uh, you know, his own bullshit and uh, really does believe in what he's talking about. So I just, I don't get the impression that he's smart enough to be manipulative enough that it would be fake. Yeah. You know, the cult thing. I think he actually believes it. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you go ahead, yeah. answer your question. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, that that's actually crazy stuff. And I love, you know, later in the game, once we get to the part where Deacon and Boozer uh, start dealing more directly with the Rippers, I know there's going to be some interesting conversations there. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I wanted to say hello to Ruben Diaz. Saludos. Hello and welcome. Uh, and also, Gordon Link wants to know, uh, what do you think the best weapons for hordes? The obvious answer is the Chicago Chopper, the S&P 9, and the MG 55. I'm but sorry, did someone say the MG? I'm going to be in my phone. MG 55. You know it's a bad motherfucker. So, uh, so those are the obvious answers, but my personal answer to the question, what do you think is the best weapon for the hordes? The best weapon against the hordes is your own imagination. <clears throat> if you will, you know, we discussed this shit. I think it was the very first episode of the very first podcast that you and I recorded together. If you will take a moment to study the terrain and <clears throat> I'm sorry that whiskey's getting to me, guys. <laughs> Um, You're not supposed to drink the whole bottle. I know, <laughs> right? Uh, why didn't they put that on the label, man? <laughs> <clears throat> but no, for real. Um, your own imagination is the most effective weapon against the hordes. If you will study the terrain, study the environmental hazards that you have around you, and use your tactics. Um, I mean, as I've demonstrated before, you can take out the hordes without using any weapons. Just use the terrain. Use the traps and the bombs that you're given. And that is really all you need. So, again, obvious answer, Chicago Chopper, SMP9, MG55, uh, but then also actually use the terrain to your advantage. Take advantage of superior elevation, superior tactics, uh, you know, manipulate the terrain so that you can take control of the battlefield. <clears throat> I just want to point out, Zylot says, every time Claire says, I'll be in my bunk, I get a sudden blast of the Hero Named Jane song from Firefly. <laughs> I mean, oh, yes, fuck exactly yeah! Firefly is exactly yeah. what I was And every time Hell I say, yeah. I'll be in my bunk. Yeah. Jane, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Total badass, yeah. <clears throat> that was such a good show. I miss that shit. I still watch, I still rewatch it every now and then. Feel that vibration? Yeah, but the power lines are still dead. What? Man, oh, it couldn't be that easy, right? All right, come on, let's check out the transformers. So, uh, y your dad and your brothers, what happened to them? I don't know. On my way back, I tried calling over and over. I always got a busy signal. By the time I reached the house, it was deserted. The entire neighborhood was deserted. There were flyers everywhere, evacuation orders. I went to the closest refugee camp, but it was overrun. 
Everyone was dead. Freaks were everywhere. <clears throat> Jesus, Ricky, I'm, I'm real sorry. Yeah, it was a long time ago. <laughs> then, you know, that's one of the first times where you hear Deacon actually showing genuine sympathy, where he tells Ricky about, you know, uh, you know, he says, Jesus, Ricky, I'm so sorry about her, uh, you know, her losing touch with her family when the shit hit the fan. It's one of the only times that I can recall Deacon expressing genuine sympathy for someone else's suffering. Or someone else's loss, even. Yeah. And I think that's because they've known each other for a while and they probably have mm, the, the first time he's ever him. even spoken to her about it. Yeah, yeah, wow. right? The, the scene coming up where she confronts him about the photo. Okay. Um, a, a similar kind of indicator of that, that well, they've known each other for a while, but they just don't boxes, so let's just go really down and check talk it out. about meaningful yeah, things. Right. Like they, they don't talk about their past or anything. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, what's with so, uh, uh, let's see, uh, what was it? Miranda says, uh, how very Willy Wonka of you, Rex. <laughs> what, I guess the comment about using your imagination, <laughs> your imagination being the best weapon? <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy makes a good point. Uh, I think the reason Deke's voice changes like that you know, is because he realizes, damn, I'm not the only one who lost someone. Not the so only one? You're not the only person who lost someone that night. Ouch. Isn't that what O'Brien tells him? Well, that's what I was going to bring up. Is um, Yeah, there's the, the line O'Brien says. I think it's early on in the game um, where he, he kind of makes the comment about uh, Deke not being the only one who lost someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, yeah, that's Deke is so wrapped up in Sarah's loss that he doesn't think of what yeah. he has lost. Yeah, does not I mean, give a shit. So... Yeah, and he's actually really fortunate because he still has Boozer. Still has Boozer. Still got his brother I mean, with him. Yeah. Who the fuck does Ricky have? You know, Here, from get... before. Come on, who does Iron Mike have? Who does right anyone around. have? No one sure. has anyone that they know from before, yeah. with the exception of Boozer and Deacon. They're the only ones who actually have some connection to people they used to know. That's a really love. good point. Yeah, there's nobody else. I can't think of any other characters in the game that have any one of any of the any of the people from their past that they actually give a shit about. I mean, Tucker and Lisa somewhat knew each other; they were neighbors. But I mean, even that is not a like a loving, you know, friendship or whatever. Um, you know. So yeah, that that is really interesting. Yeah, oh, shit. Danny says says it in the mission log. Deacon says something like. How do other people move on and deal? Yeah, right. I do wish that I had brought my forking auto shotgun with me, man. Mm -hmm. I love having I the auto shotgun. Yeah, this is a great place to have it. Because I always think it's funny when there's enemies coming down the stairs here and you're covering the stairs with an automatic 12-gauge shotgun. <laughs> it's like yeah, you're not getting down these stairs, man. Uh, but I guess the uh, Chicago Chopper will do. Chrissy says, Miranda, uh, to, to Miranda Satin's comment, um, I think that's one of Deke's character, uh, one of the components of Deke's character arc is that he's honestly really self-centered in the beginning. Uh, there's so many uh, references about how Deke only cared yes. about himself and Booza, and that is absolutely part of his arc. It, I found it, it, it's taken me a few playthroughs to really understand Deke's arc because it's, it is kind of understated. A lot of the time, and sure. you know, since I've I've sort of been getting into more of the the Lisa storyline and thinking about that and her mm -hmm. and how she is really the impetus for Deacon's change. She really is, yeah. Um, but it's you it's good? definitely you know at the beginning yeah. he is really a drifter like who is like well, a, a micrometer well, away from just shit. being you know what? As a complete today, I'm claiming this for asshole who's just he is a mass murderer <laughs> you know he just is right, killing people left and, and right and, and uh you know killing the freaks without any sense of remorse or any idea this that they it. are people yeah. still okay. um like you know sarah comes to tell us later they are still people who are infected they're not zombies this isn't a yes. zombie game um, nice work. and uh, and yeah he doesn't want to join a camp on, you know he doesn't want to have anything to do with anyone at the camps he just wants to be a loner who is completely removed from civilization society any semblance of that that is left or anything that people are trying to rebuild 
Um, he is right on the so, cusp. Why did you ask about my dad, my brother? Of saying fuck it to everything. Yeah. And then it's through know. the Lisa storyline. He never mentioned that he before, starts so, to uh, care. You know, I'm sorry mm -hmm. about someone that is not himself. I mean, okay, Boozer. Yeah, he does care about Boozer, but <clears throat> yeah. It feels almost like Boozer is an extension of him, and he is an extension of Boozer. They, they, they almost don't feel like separate units in a way. Yeah. Hey, um, hey. So. Come on, we gotta get moving. Yeah, it's it's just sort of interesting to look at his <clears throat> arc from being, you know, just so separate from the world yeah. by his own design, and choosing to come back into what is left of society or what is, is um, going to be society, i.e. Lost Lake, getting the power back on with Ricky, you know, things right. like that. Yeah. And then the, the Thunder Egg thing that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, actually Yeah, bringing her the gift. That the he's shit. trying to do something nice for her, but it's completely fucking useless, something she is no use yeah. for a pretty rock in the apocalypse, you know, but, but he, he's just trying to do something time. nice. It's the first time he's given a shit about someone's feelings. Sure, yeah. This is this is feelings. We the, he's been in a world for two years where he's avoided his own feelings, and he also you know everyone around him has not been able to talk about their feelings. You know, living out in the shit, you don't have time for intimate connections. You don't even have time for a quick hookup if you need to relieve some sexual tension. Like that's not going to happen. You do not have time, let alone time for emotional healing or processing or or any kind of emotional connection with anyone there's no fucking time there's not a moment to breathe you just tamp down your emotions don't pay them any mind you know keep on surviving but the biggest theme of the game is surviving isn't living very true just scraping by isn't good enough mm-hmm well said. Damn, girl. You do get fired up when you're talking about stuff you're passionate about. <laughs> All right. And that's why I invited you on this show, ma'am, uh, for that perspective right there. So this is where we're, the reason I paused this here. I wanted to let you finish, but I also wanted to draw attention to the dialogue that's about to happen uh, right here before uh, Deacon, right here between Deacon and Ricky. This, I think, is one of the things that's sets the tone and but that sets the tone for the interaction between these two characters and tells it it's almost foreshadow foreshadowing because we know here in just a moment Ricky's going to make her move on Deacon here in a little bit mm -hmm. when they get to the infirmary and i think this right here what's coming up next tells us what's really going on between these two and i'll i'll elaborate more here in a moment as we get to it just want to say hi to Basics of Pain who just joined the chat. Hello. B.O.P. What's up, man? Hello and welcome. Glad to see you tonight. Okay, so here we go. This is what I was talking hey, about. I think this is the cutscene. Why I stopped writing with you and Boozer. Was I supposed to ask? I already knew why. Iron Mike's bullshit. God, Ricky, do we got to do this now? We had been writing together. For, I, I don't so she's explaining one. why she quit riding with Deacon and Boozer. Okay. This is why she quit hanging out with them. Night. And I remember it really clearly. It was snowing outside, and Boozer was snoring. Remember how he used to snore? I swear, I thought he was going to bring a horde down on us, yeah, right? Well, pretty much hasn't changed. <laughs> anyway. And you can tell she's kind of awkward and a little bit uncomfortable to keep talking. Deacon knows where fidgety. this conversation is going. He does. He's like, oh, yeah, ha, 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 let's stop talking now. He like, remembers he that night just as well as she does. Well, it's probably every night. And he was sitting there looking at the picture of Sarah all night long, didn't sleep a wink, couldn't stop looking at the picture of Sarah. And uh, Ricky noticed because she was watching him. She was watching him to see what he was doing and probably, in my opinion, thinking about going to him. What'd you know, Ricky? That I didn't want but to end up like so many didn't of want to end here, up like so many of us here, trapped in the past. I, I just I wanna look so forward. She's right, sitting there at the campfire with them, thinking about going to Deacon. Okay. 
And he's just sitting there staring at his picture of Sarah. And that is the night that Ricky decided to stop riding with them because that was the moment that she realized she didn't really have a chance with Deacon. For, I disagree for, with you. Hang I don't on, think hang on. Let me finish. Uh, let me finish. Uh, I, I am interested in your, in, in your opinion there, uh, but allow me just a moment. It's uh, it's that's the moment where she's like, I need to start looking in another direction uh, for Deacon. Other women just don't exist for him because he is still so loyal to the memory of Sarah. He's not, he, he's literally not even looking at this woman who's sitting there by the campfire, obviously interested in him. He's, he's not even aware that she's there watching him. He's just sitting there staring off into space, looking at this old picture he's got of Sarah. Uh, and that is the moment where Ricky says, I need to go find somewhere to live and go hook up with Addie or whatever. I pursue a relationship with Addie. So f for me personally, I think that is the moment where she realized she really didn't have a, a real chance with Deacon and decided to stop riding with them. So please go ahead. Tell me your side of it. Tell me, tell me your opinion on it. I don't think it's about romance at all or, or, or sex or anything like that. I mm -hmm. mean, obviously she does hit on him. Mm -hmm. But I think this is just another moment in the story where we're presented with another character that is challenging Deacon's status quo. Hmm. He is in this place. We talked about this on the Boozer episode of the podcast, episode 14, the idea that Deacon is trapped in this place of denial of grief and rage and just mm -hmm. not wanting to face facts. And he has a death wish and he is reckless and he is endangering other people. And I think what happened in that moment is that okay. what she's saying here is I didn't want to keep riding with you because she saw that he was too trapped in mm. his grief and his attachment to the sure. past. Okay. He, he's going to get himself killed or he's going to get people. Boozer killed yeah. or he's going to get or Ricky get killed. Ricky killed. Like, okay. Yeah. This is not this is not good. All right, um, so I gotta yeah, say, so Chrissy agrees with me. I was about Chrissy to say, <laughs> I was just about to say, <laughs> the two smartest girls I know are like, nah, dude, you're fucking wrong. I'm trying to tell you this yeah. is why Ricky was like, nah, 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 not, not, no, no, thanks. And so, I think I, yeah. I'm gonna go out on a limb, and Chrissy, I'm gonna ask, have you seen? No, no, you're you're good. You're not stealing my thunder at all. Um, yeah, no, y'all are y'all are agreeing with each other. I I, I dig it. Of, yeah. One hey, wait a minute. Are y'all teaming up on me? Y'all are teaming <laughs> up against me, aren't you? Damn it. <laughs> you know you like it. Uh, I, mean, I just want to go on a slight tangent real quick. What you got? Um, so one of my favorite TV shows is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and season <laughs> six is a really dark <laughs> you season. Would. I don't know why you're laughing at me. Have uh, you seen it? I like it, too. Oh, then shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, you do? Okay. <laughs> so season six is a really dark season season and a lot yeah. of people don't like it because it does get really really dark mm. but i see in ricky and her storyline i see elements of buffy's storyline in season six certain mm. things that are said to her and i'm thinking specifically there's an episode where uh, spike tells her about her death wish and how um the vampires get the drop on the slayers because all they need is one good day where the Slayer gives in to her death wish. And I think that is a similar thing that Ricky is seeing in Deacon, that she sees that he has a death wish, and all it's going to take is just one day when it just grabs him just a little bit tighter than normal, hmm. and he gives in to it. Damn. All right. Yeah, that's pretty fucking badass. I, I remember that uh, season six uh, got real. I remember that there was a season that got really dark, but I don't remember the specifics. Um, yeah, fuck. That's, and that's true. You know, that's all the freaks need. That's all the freakers mm -hmm. need is that one time where he lets his guard down and, uh, you know, gives in to his rage and fails to be aware of his surroundings and Boozer gets his arm burnt off. You know, uh, yeah, that's all it takes is that one fuck up. Damn, all right. Quasi well, says, 100 bad guys fighting the Batman. The Batman needs to win 100 times. The bad guys the only, only need to, to win, win once. once. Yeah, right. right it's on. not 100 bad guys. It's 10,000, 100,000 million yeah, freakers. Yeah. 500 freakers at the sawmill horde, and all you yeah. got to do is fuck up one time. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. 
damn okay well shit that got wow okay right on thanks guys that's actually a fantastic fucking conversation uh and i knew i, I knew instinctively uh if we allowed ourselves to stop for a minute and really analyze that one short section of dialogue look where it took us you know, mm-hmm. so yeah, I, I seriously appreciate that, guys. Right on. And and once again, two of the smartest girls that I know are telling me, "Nah, dude, you're wrong." I'm trying to tell you what she's thinking. All right, fair enough, man. And I, I think that's something that is the default for a lot of video games: is male character plus female uh, character equals passionate, one of them or both of right. them want to fuck. Yeah. And it's like, well, sure. it could be platonic. It could be something else. Yeah. Should we kill some rippers? I'm kind of hoping that we can. Uh, I'm, I'm genuinely curious to see how uh, my traps are going to work out here. So I think we're the Rippers have spawned. Let's see what happens. Are you ready? You ready for some yeah. explosions? Let's do this. Are you sure it's them? I saw the mark on his back. We're from Lost Lake Camp. I'm hey, we're from Lost Lake hey. Camp. <laughs> He's like, bitch, get down. <laughs> get down. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. Okay, we got one of them right there. Okay, we know there's not one up here with the sniper. What the hell are they doing up here? No, no, no. Why you drag your asses back to Iron Butte and find a shithole you crawled out from? One should be coming around over here. And of course he's not because I've got a bomb there waiting on him. We have a treaty. On a far north, okay, aren't you? all right. Let's push well, forward and see what happens. Carlos, do you? So far it hasn't been super effective. And it looked oh man, check it out. We did not get the uh the Ripper Heavy who's on top of the car. I'm really disappointed. Oh, That's the one I really off. wanted to get. Out here happy, that yeah? a car huh? that Isn't that what you want? It may be, but I really don't think so. Headhunter oh, man. says, I like to think that Ricky would know better than to try to reason with a ripper. I mean, at this point, though, they do have the... They do, in fact, have a treaty, yeah. Maybe that is supposedly how it's been done up until, you know, the whole boozer... Um, oh, okay. Okay, so I do have to say, uh, Deacon just said I think that's the last of them. But okay, let me let's let's take a, a brief moment to examine this dialogue here. Uh, so they just said something about how they're all freaked out or, or tripped out or something. What the hell are they amped up on? No idea. Back in the day, I dealt with a few tweakers who acted like that. I think they're on PCP or whatever that other shit is. Oh. uh bath salts remember that was becoming a thing before everything right, went down on, so i see a lot of people referencing this scene right here as they're definitely on pcp i disagree i don't think so personally um th- he's saying i think they're on pcp or they're and they, similar they are like people who they are, are like people who are on pcp my personal opinion just from i i've never found anything in the game that confirms this it's just me personally i think that they are actually taking the nest residue from the nest and using that as cut to cut into whatever drugs they are using maybe they're using pcp maybe they're using fucking meth you know crystal meth they whatever look like meth cookers like <laughs> kind of do and so we, we like know that Carlos, that's how Carlos had his falling out with the mongrels back in the day, is he had uh, illegal drug dealings that were outside of the scope of what the mongrels were doing. Now, I don't maybe the mongrels were involved in drug trafficking. I do not know. But whatever Carlos was doing was not sanctioned by the motorcycle club and his drug dealing uh, activities got other mongrels hurt. That's what got him kicked out of the motorcycle club and uh, got his tattoos burnt off of him when they, you know, excommunicated him from the club. Uh, so we know that he has dealings with like illicit drugs and shit like that. And I can easily imagine Carlos being the type of dude who draws people to him who know how to manufacture various, uh, you know, controlled substances. And I can easily see them, you know, with their desire to be more like the freaks, I can easily see them, you know, making whatever drugs they're making and then cutting it with the nest residue. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think I 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right on, right on. Because uh, I think what they're taking is pretty much irrelevant. It doesn't matter what they are actually taking. Uh, and I don't think it is specifically PCP. Uh, whatever it is they're taking, I think it is mixed with the uh, mixed with the nest residue. Mm -hmm. uh, just to catch up with the chat, um, going back to the Buffy thing, Quasi yeah. says the scariest episode of Buffy was the silent episode with the bad dudes that floated around. Oh. Miranda Satin says, no, 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 the musical episode was scarier. My personal favorite scary episode or scariest episode is the one where Buffy wakes up in a mental asylum oh, and is halfway convinced that's not what I meant that to do. She's, she imagined the whole thing. Oh, wow. She's actually just crazy. That one freaks may, me the fuck may out. Man, you folks really one. know your fucking Buffy, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> like, I watched that shit in the 90s as a teenager and was like, yeah, this is a cool show. And I couldn't hardly tell you a single thing that happened in any particular episode. You were Aside not a teenager in the 90s. Not a chance. I thought you were like 70, <laughs> 80 years old. <laughs> You know, the years blur together after two or three centuries. You just lose track. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not nah, for real. Uh, I mean, like the martial arts was interesting to me, but that's that's pretty much all I remember of that show. So you know, Joe is asking, um, he'd be interested to know if you could take enough res nest residue and actually become a freaker. I mean, I'm pretty sure... That's what I mean, it's got to be infecting happen. you at some level. I mean, you know, there's nothing in game that tells us how the infection actually works. But, uh, I mean, you would think, you know, taking that shit in. Yeah. Uh, well, when you use it to make the residue bolts, it turns people kind of crazy. It does. And yeah. Yeah. So I, I just wonder yeah, with the rippers, the it don't seem to be acting out of sorts like people who've been shot with the residue. Bolts. What? Yeah. Sure. So, are they taking like a much lower dose? Mm hmm. It must be. What happened? Um, okay, Chrissy's asking with, about with Uncharted. You yeah, I saw that. Where it inhales the vapor of El Dorado and changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what I did. Interesting. Thinking it compared to what I'm going to do to him if I ever see the son of a bitch. Yeah, we know Claire's into Uncharted as well. Come on, let's go. You said that with such a tone. <laughs> you do I never got into Charles. So uh, Charmed Fucking Angel, Alyssa Angel, Milano. I watched that. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Did somebody say? <laughs> Alyssa <laughs> Milano. Yes, I used to watch Charm too, but it was for Alyssa Milano. <laughs> All right. So, hey, there is actually another really interesting part coming up right here uh, for everybody that's always wondering about Deacon's phobia to water. This is the first part where this is the first. Actually, it might even be the only part of the game where it's. Not necessarily clearly defined, but openly discussed, because there's the one part, I think we've already been to that scene where Deacon and Sarah, the flashback scene where they are picking lavender by the lake, and Sarah is actually about to remove her top and jump in the water to go skinny dipping, and he's like, whoa, 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 stop, no, hey, cut that out, and she's... Uh, she stops pulling off her shirt, and he's like, "No, don't stop that. Just stop going toward the water." Uh, and so there's that one, that one thing right there where it's like, "Oh, this dude obviously has a serious fucking aversion to water for some reason." But this is the only spot in the game where I know of where it is clearly discussed. So let's hear what uh, Deacon tells Ricky about this. Stop you? How'd you end up in the MC? It's a long story. We got a long ride. Okay, I, I was a member of the 10th Mountain, part of a forward unit working with the Northern Alliance. Shit, I didn't know you were in the army. Why were. You want to hear she this didn't even not? know he was in the army. I've, I've always found that interesting. We were advancing on Mazari Sharif. We got ambushed by a group of Taliban heading the other way. And they were in flatbed trucks, decked out with CU-23s, modified anti-aircraft guns. Big guns. Yeah, really big fucking guns. Our Humvee exploded, went over a cliff, right into the Hari. You know how hard it is to drown in Afghanistan? It's hard. The place is one giant goddamn desert. Anyway, I was thrown clear when I came to. The, the Humvee was upside down in the river. I swam out to see if anyone survived. I, uh, I pulled a body back to shore, and I did that 
Seven more times. Seven by, more by times. The time I called in Tanner, my Sarge, I was done. And when I came home, I don't know, I uh, I bought a bike, spent a couple of years on the road, just moving from place to place, and um to farewell, you grew up around here. So that's that's to me one of the most interesting sections. One of the most interesting segments of dialogue in the game, because that tells us so much about Deacon's background and also, you know, his interaction with uh, the people he was riding with before the game started. Because, you know, we talked about Ricky rode with Deacon and Boozer for how long? Um, I think it was uh, I, actually, I said earlier it was a year. I think it was actually a couple months. OK, um, yeah. But so it was right after everything went crazy. Right. And they were together for a while. She didn't even know he was in the military. You know, so we were discussing, you know, how they don't talk about their past. She never talked about her family. He never talked about being in the military. Uh, she just said a moment ago, oh, I did shit. I didn't know you were in the army. So, like, she didn't even know that he had a history of being in the military. And um, here he is now revealing that, you know, his, his squad was ambushed. Their Humvee was flipped over into a river. Uh, and yet he, he dragged seven bodies out of this exploded Humvee uh, and... After he did that, I think that is when he had his real, like, first disconnect there. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's where a lot of his psychological trauma comes from. I mean, if you've ever been in a situation where you've had to handle a cadaver, you know, and it's people you fucking know and perhaps even had some level of friendship or, or brotherhood with and you're dragging these bodies out of the water it's pretty heavy shit you know um eight times was it eight total eight. he eight said he total. did it seven more oh. times eight mm -hmm. times total um it's not just one and, body of one friend right yeah and and one of, of those was his sergeant you know oh. yeah and if it if your sarge is a decent guy you know that's somebody you're relying on uh on several different levels uh he actually wasn't a decent guy he mentions later uh, uh to corey that he wished he'd served right. on someone like corey yeah yeah we don't yeah. know maybe he maybe there was a, a i don't know <laughs> how many units or whatever you would be in like maybe he's just talking more generally um but still seeing seeing seven pe eight, sorry eight people die and having to i assume presumably he's the only survivor because he gets thrown free and everyone else in the humvee dies yeah but yes he he's the only one there and he has to drag all the bodies out yeah and then afterward just can't stand the sight of water pretty much uh, so yeah, I mean that's that's pretty serious shit, and and it's interesting to me that he reveals this to Ricky at this point. It's something he's he didn't even talk to Sarah about it because it's I, part of his arc. It's part of his sure, arc. That's sure, yeah, earlier. opening, yeah, kind of kind of letting his walls down and uh, you know revealing part of himself to others. But that just occurred to me, you know, even the scene where he and Ricky are at the lake shore picking the lavender, Ricky's about to pull off her top and jump in the water. And he's like, no, 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 hang Sarah, on. Sarah uh, Ricky. Did I, I'm sorry. I mean, of course, I mean to say Sarah, he and Sarah are at the lake. Um, and, um, but even then she's like, well, what's wrong? You know, what's the matter? And he's like, he tells her then uh, it's it's a long story. So even then he doesn't even talk to Sarah about it. But here now it is, you know, later on. And he's actually telling Ricky the details of what really happened. And of course, he doesn't specifically say, oh, this is why I don't like water or whatever. But, you know, as the audience, we can infer that. And, and it starts to make sense in that perspective. Chrissy brings up a good point. Um, he reacted so strongly to Sarah going in the water, he didn't try to stop Ricky going in the water. Uh, um, but then Quasi says that he wasn't averse to Sarah going in, it was just going in himself. Yeah, Could sure, right. Difference. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want yeah. to address a few, few side notes in the chat real quick. Yeah, what's up? Um, the, the conversation turned to Uncharted, and I, I, I love Uncharted. Um, <laughs> okay, so, uh, so request, please. Request for 
I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, please feel free to carry on with this topic, but I did want to mention that, yeah, we're totally doing a, uh, a feedback loop live stream on Uncharted. Uh, we'll, yes. work out the, we'll work out the details later of whether we're going to start at part one and work our way up through all of them or just do whatever like your favorite one is or whatever. Because uh, then we can actually do a game where you're walking me through the game. Mm. And uh, so yeah, I'm I'm really I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, uh, for the rest of a lot of me yelling, pick up the ammo. And you're like, no, it's a finite resource. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, so please go ahead with what you were gonna say. <laughs> okay, so Miranda said, petition for Uncharted to be the next podcast subject. It's definitely gonna be the right next feedback loop subject. We are gonna do all the games. Okay. Uh, all of them. Oh, we are going to. She says we are. Not hey, would you mind doing all of them? She says we are doing all well, of them. I'll just hack your YouTube login and just stream on my own <laughs> as you on Tuesday nights if I have to. Like you don't even have to be there. It'll just be me in the game. Um, so Headhunter wants to know who is everyone's favorite Uncharted baddie. Uh, he's a big fan of Razarovic. I thought Razarovic was an excellent baddie. Hmm. Fucking fantastic. Terrifying. An absolutely terrifying man. He is someone who is just a complete fucking psychopath. Um, and he looks, his physical appearance, he looks so intimidating. Hmm. I feel like he's someone who I would be absolutely terrified to be in a room with. Just so insanely scary. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Marlo is Richie's favorite Uncharted villain. My favorite Uncharted villain uh, works for Marlo, Talbot from Uncharted 3. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah I think you've uh, talked about him before, rather animatedly, which, if I recall correctly. Which is why you had that tone in your voice when you said Uncharted, uh, and who was it? Someone was like, hey, what have you got against Uncharted? Uh, yeah, Joe Schmo said, how dare you, Rex, Uncharted is awesome. You weren't picking on Uncharted, you were trying to... Uh, tease me about my love for Talbot. <laughs> um, and anyway, uh, let's get back to the I'll game. Come out here a few times to see <laughs> Even Chrissy says, "No, no, we are." <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she says, "Even if I don't want to do that stream, then uh, she and Miranda will do that show with you, Claire." <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Hey, I mean, maybe board. we should hey, just all take maybe over. all of us, yeah. <laughs> hey, the more the merrier, right? Yeah. Girls Night with Uncharted. Yeah, sorry, Rex, you're not invited. <laughs> Damn. You're just going to have to, like, uh, you know, fuck off somewhere for the evening. Can Let I at least, like, hang stream. out in the closet and watch, man? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Schizo, you want to be a peeping Tom? <laughs> oh, fuck, that's a low blow. Damn! <laughs> Not really, I do like schism. Man, I'm feeling the burn on that shit from 1,500 miles away. God damn! <laughs> Ouch, man. I thought we was cool. <laughs> Miranda says, see the upside, Rex, that way you can hang out in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll have to settle for that then, won't I? <laughs> Ooh, wait, 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 Richie says, great trilogy. <sighs> if I am reading that correctly, are you also not a fan of Uncharted 4? Ah, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> hmm. I love how all the girls keep teaming up against me, man. It's like, damn. I mean, maybe you deserve it. I mean, give a brother a break. Shit. <laughs> Somebody called the fire department, says Joe Schmo. <laughs> that was a badass burn, wasn't it, dog? <laughs> oh, okay. Ricky says fourology. What would it be? A quad quadrilogy? What, what would, yeah. Is that a word? I think so. Hmm. I mean, you got trilogy, you got quintet. What's what's a, a four book series or a four game series? Uh, Chris is asking uh, I, if I don't like Uncharted 4 or The Lost Legacy is really good. I like Uncharted 4, but I just didn't like that they fired Amy Hennig and they fucked up the theme and they retconned it so that Nate magically suddenly has a brother. Yeah. Um, it's never mentioned before. They didn't follow through on any of the setup with Nate's backstory from Uncharted 3. They just kind of like mm -hmm. threw in more questions and like some weird shit with his mom that made zero sense to me. Maybe someone can explain it to me. I didn't fucking get it. I thought it was terribly written. Great game. Excellent gameplay. Like some of the 
the scenes that you play through feel fucking fantastic. Nothing will be Uncharted 3's falling out of a helicopter without a parachute sequence. That's fucking bomb. I fucking love that whole little sequence. Um, Uncharted 4 does have some good moments. Uh, it's a little too long. You spend a little too long on the island, just going through forest after forest after forest after all. forest. Yeah. No. Go ahead. No, seriously, um, go ahead. It's, uh, but yeah, Lost Legacy. I like Lost Legacy. I mean, it's just a short. It's like 4.5. It's not like a whole uh, game in and of itself, really. It's just a, it feels like a little bit of a DLC kind of game. Um, Uncharted 4 is actually the reason why Madagascar is on one of my you know top five places I want to visit after the pandemic. I really mm, want to go there. I want to cool. see the lemurs. <laughs> so it's not the show, uh, the, the cartoon... About, no, no, yeah. no. Madagascar is actually um, off the coast of Africa. It's I mean, yeah, I know really it's a real awesome place. Yeah, where, sure, sure. No, I, but it's really cool with like in terms of the um, animals and the uh, the way that everything has evolved completely separately from the rest of the world. That it has like extremely unique species there mm -hmm. uh, that have evolved completely independently, mm -hmm. and it's just it's really fascinating. Yeah. Where are you doing? Yeah, sounds cool actually. Uh, so I needed to reply to one in the chat here. Uh, Zylock, yeah. Zylock says he grew up with three sisters, so I feel your pain. Like, yeah, man. It's not even fair, dude. <laughs> Girls be teaming up on a brother. I can't catch a break, man. <laughs> As he quasi says Uncharted 4 was his first and only Uncharted game. Don't see a problem with it. I mean, it is a fantastic game. You want to talk about good photo mode? That has good photo mode. Mm. That's fucking I, I'm sorry, game. which game? Which game? Uncharted 4. Uh, my only oh, issue oh, did is it have a good photo and... mode in it? Oh, fuck cool. yeah. Okay. I, I'm, well, yeah. okay. I was about to say I've never played it, but you're going to hate me, and I'm going to apologize in advance. I played, I think it was, what was it, the Nathan Drake Collection mm -hmm. that had one, two, and three. I don't remember them. I don't remember a single minute of any oh. of them. Yeah. It was like, well, that's okay. yeah, you get it's a video game. <laughs> yeah, I get to play them again. Okay. Uh, so maybe you can, um, you know, kind of help it stand out in my mind a little bit because okay. I played them and I was like, yeah, it's a video game. Let's go play something cool now, you know. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Ricky just showed us the sawmill. Interestingly enough, on my very first playthrough, the first time I played Days Gone, I assumed that was the mission to go kill the sawmill. Because uh. Ricky took us there. It's like, oh, well, there's this big badass ward here. Ricky just showed them to us. It's time to go take on the sawmill. And oh, so my that work out for you? actually quite well. Um, it took a couple of tries, but yeah, I went in and I, I ruined their fucking day. You know, I mean, uh, that's actually where I developed the method of using the train tunnel of setting the mines, uh, mining the path toward the train tunnel, mining the tunnel, leading them to the tunnel and then absolutely fucking destroy just ruining their fucking day uh because i mean that's 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 really where i got the technique of don't just piss off the horde and run where they chase you rather lead them where you want them to be and that is when i came up with that because i mean it's the fucking sawmill man and all i had was like the mg45 the four five not the five five just the four five and you, know, you still say mg i'm gonna be in my bunk <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I had that gun uh, and I had the SMP9, of course, and I had discovered several of the hidden loot locations. So I had proximity mines, proximity bombs. I had grenades. I had things like that. Um, Check the chat. What's going on in the chat? Whoa. Hey, right on. Basics of pain. What's up, brother? Thanks, man. Yeah. So, hey, I'm, I'm curious, Basics of Pain, did, did you do the Sawmill Horde early when you played Days Gone for the first time, or do you recall? Uh, so the reason I brought this up is I wanted to go in and run the Sawmill Horde doing it exactly the same way that I did on that first mission, or the first time that I did it, and uh, just pretty much just to show how it is done and how I pulled it off. So okay. Zylock brings up the first time he did the sawmill at uh, sawmill. Uh, I led the horde to hey, the Ricky, tunnel and then got I'm, ambushed uh, by wolves. On oh shit! <laughs> that is so fucking not, classic. Uh, days gone, right? Whatever the hell. <laughs> you set up this badass plan and then get ambushed by wolves or something. <laughs> 
he's he's depressed or something. Talk to Addy. I think I know a way to cheer him up. I'm sure everyone here so knows you your wolf technique, I but do you uh, want to touch on that real quick? Right. So if you, right. so if you hate the wolves in Days Gone, if you hate the wolves, the runners, so or the now, mountain lions, please, please, yeah. please. Check out the smoke bombs. Use the smoke bombs against the wolves, runners, and mountain lions. I promise you, you're going to have a fucking blast. Uh, so, okay, the weapons that I had the first time that I did the sawmill, I did have the auto shotgun unlocked. I did have the SMP9 unlocked, and I did have the uh, MG45 unlocked. So, and I had, I had a few things like proximity mines, proximity bombs, stuff like that. Uh, I don't have very many proximity mines right now, but that's okay. We, sh we should still be all right. We should be able to pull it off. We'll run up there and whip out some superior tactics and ruin their day. Oh, what are you going to whip out? Uh, Seems inappropriate. Uh, superior tactics? My, my wits? Is that what you call it? Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to take my wits into the battle. <laughs> what is that little chuckle for, ma'am? You trying to say I don't have any wits? Let's uh, let's see what's going on here. Kind of clear the area before we start. Do it. There we go. That's it. Okay. Um. All right. So it looks like the horde is here, right? Okay. Cool. The horde is here. And you know, let's just take a moment to appreciate the finer things in life. <laughs> Such a perk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stream is delayed. I don't even see it like straight away, but I knew exactly. What <laughs> you already knew what was coming, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you knew what was coming. <laughs> so anyway, let's go set this battle up. You know, you, you it's it really is the the you know the finer details that make life interesting. It really is. Sometimes you just have to take a moment to appreciate the little things. And I'm pretty sure that most everybody in the uh, chat tonight, most of the audience, you're probably already familiar with the, uh, you know, use the train tunnel method. Uh, this is in my tutorials. Um, I show it quite often, actually. I, I just kind of like showing it to people, you know, just to see what they think. This Wait, is again, what are we talking about? <laughs> My method for taking on the sawmill horde. Oh, what are you okay. talking about? I thought you were talking about the train boobs. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's most everything we need from in here. Chrissy said, so is it little things or superior tactics? Men's naming is so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. You know, a, a, a wise person once told me that it's it's not the size that matters, it's the power. It's all about power, right? Transfer of power. Sure. I mean, I'm just talking like I know stuff. That's just what I heard. <laughs> okay, so we have the tunnel is mined. We're going to set up. Let's see, I, I do like to have a proximity mine or two down here. I feel really bad now. Headhunter just made a, a comment about appreciating the little things is definitely what I'm being reminded of with this whole thing with Grandpa going on. And here oh, we are being yeah. kind of like low-key smutty. Uh, yeah, uh, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you do have a good point. Re appreciating the little things in life is definitely... Absolutely. Um, and I mean, really, that's what... Really is what... I mean, and I mean that seriously. That really is the kind of stuff that makes life interesting, man. You know, have a little appreciation for the little things in life. Those, If you pay attention to the little details, the big stuff takes care of itself. You know, if you're 
I don't know, if, if you're paying attention to the little things that make your partner happy, you know, if you're paying attention to the little things that make your kids smile, you know, and, and you you take time to enjoy that shit, that is what makes life interesting. Mm -hmm. To me, at least. <laughs> Chrissy's like, I was about to say that we're Loki making dick jokes and Hunter is <laughs> going hallmark on us. Well, yeah. No, Headhunter, don't worry about it. You didn't ruin the mood. No, we were we no. were ruining the mood with our smutty humor. <laughs> uh, or, or at least just bringing it down to a baser level. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Like no, anyway, and, go, and, go and, kill some freaks. And we're going to go punish some freaks because that's what we do best. But I love the shit out of that. That's you know, I, I love that there's those multiple perspectives uh, present here. You know, there's there's the aspect of like, no, really, I'm trying to say you need to appreciate the small things in life because you know we we've had an emer we've had a, a serious incident in our family and it's made us think. You know, hey, take time to appreciate. The little things uh, that that make your family special and make your friends and family make your friends and loved ones special. But then there's also the aspect of you know, <laughs> let's just make some dirty jokes and have a good time. You know, it's all there, and I fucking love it. Uh, so yeah, for real, Hunter, don't feel bad, man. You're not <laughs> you're not bringing the mood down. You're adding to the conversation. That's what I love about this medium of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, back to some days gone, some actual days gone shit. Uh, this is pretty much how I did it the first time I did this. I did come here early. Uh, I was early in the game. Hadn't even been to any of the militia camps or anything like that. I thought this was the point in the game where you're supposed to go take on this horde. Uh, so, I did pop a focus cocktail, and all I had was Boys. grenades. Yes. Sorry, uh, before you start, I'm mm -hmm. actually going to step away for a couple seconds. I'm going to go grab something. I need mm -hmm. to refill on my Diet Coke and I have okay. a bathroom break. So I'm going to be back in <laughs> right just a couple on. minutes. All right. Hey, would you grab me a beer while you're up? Yeah, sure. You're awesome. Thanks. All right, folks. Let's handle this sawmill horde. Here, cut! This is pretty much exactly how I did it the first time. I always love that point, that that moment in a horde fight where you can start moving toward the horde rather than backing away and leading them into the traps you have set. You can start pushing forward. I've always enjoyed that moment. You just, you just feel like such a badass. And that's one thing that Days Gone did extremely well. When you feel that transition from being the prey to becoming the predator. It's something that Days Gone just did such a fantastic job with. Okay, I've got enemies trying to flank me from behind now. And I'll bet we're just about out of ammo.
Okay, that's enough for now. In fact, <laughs> I've literally got two rounds left in the MG45. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead. Oh, shit. Let's take shelter for a second here. No more enemies nearby. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and refill the ammo. And that should be most of them. Since this is early game, uh, we do not have... Uh, the meters to show us the horde health bar because we're so early in the game. I have no idea how many are left, but I can tell you by this pile of bodies right here, I'll bet you we've taken out most of them already. There may have been a screamer nearby also. Is that... Looks like there's a lot of them down there still. This may be part of the horde itself. Did you kill him yet? Uh, we are very close, actually. I'm almost there. I think a uh, some screamers may have spawned, uh, causing a bunch of random freaks. I know, right? Do I actually? Uh... Oh no! Wait a minute. We're too early in the game for screamers, so I am most likely incorrect. I doubt there were it's any been screamers. Inefficient. <laughs> no, what it is is it's nighttime, so there's assholes everywhere. Hmm. Okay, so let's see if we've got them back down here in their feeding pit. Oh, now how are you? beer, and I got myself a Diet Dr. Pepper. Oh, right on. I also got some apple pie. Right on. You're such a good friend. I did not bring enough apple pie for the whole class. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> did you bring enough beer for the whole class? <laughs> Negative on that as well. <laughs> So it's interesting to me that the horde has already aggroed on us. Uh, I was hoping to at least toss a couple of more pipe bombs down there in the uh, feeding pit, but that's okay. Still, we're going to use the tunnel here to get them funneled in nice and tight. And we're still using only weapons that are available early in the game. I mean, the auto shotgun and the SMP9, those are fairly advanced weapons, but they are available early in the game. You could totally have them unlocked by this point. So, you know, I'm not using New Game Plus weapons right now. This is totally stuff you could have unlocked by this point in the game. Because this is the exact same loadout that I had the very first time I did this. I think we just got them. And, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, or for anybody who discovers this video after the fact and uh, isn't aware, actually, there's still a few more of them down here. Let's go get them. Uh, for anyone who's not aware of this, when you take on these story mission hordes early like this, you do not get a confirmation mission. The confirmation message saying you've killed a full horde that does not happen until you show up for the mission itself. So you actually can take on this horde early. And you actually will get credit for it. But you do not get credit until you uh, show up for the actual mission. There we go. All right. Okay, that should be all of them. So if, you, if you're doing this early before the story mission, just be... Be extra careful to get all of them because this horde actually can regenerate over time. Uh, you have to be careful to get them all. As long as you got them all, when you show up for the mission, it will auto-complete and the next cutscene will trigger.
So, anyway, that was fun. I just love killing this horde. I could kill this horde all day long. All day, every day. All day, every day. Damn straight. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and... Didn't you... Uh, I seem to recall you saying you actually wanted to save this horde for the story when we get to the story mission. Was that right? Um, Later I don't mind. Hmm. Okay. You. Okay, let's go ahead and we're going to load that save game. We're going to pretend we never actually cleared this horde. And uh, that way, when we get here for the story, they will, this horde will still be available to us. Okay. Sorry to be so quiet. Follow me to my apple pie. <laughs> I was so hungry. I ate my dinner like an old lady at 4.30 this afternoon. So that I wouldn't... <laughs> I <laughs> wouldn't be full when we started yeah. the stream. Because I just oh, get yeah, paranoid yeah, about right. you know, being like full and feeling kind of drowsy or whatever from having sure. just eaten. Or just like get all, you know, I don't know, just, I just didn't want to be, I didn't want to be eating on the on the stream. <laughs> and now here I am eating <laughs> an apple right. pie. Eating, like, oh, eating fucking pie. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about it for the past half hour because I remembered that it's the last of the pie that I had at Christmas. Ah, oh, okay. Um, and I'll be like, damn, there's still a slice in the fridge. <laughs> I could totally go get that right now. Mm. <laughs> when you said you should go do the uh, the sawmill, I was like, that's when I can go get the pie. Wait a minute. I'm sad. You didn't hang out and watch me kill the sawmill horde. It's, it's not like I haven't seen it before. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and hmm. hey, come around more often. Yeah, what's so up? John John Patterson in the chat, um, aka Quasimoto, hey. aka Aussie, um, aka my podcast guest <laughs> this week and last week. Um, the AKA episode, by the my way, ghost of sushi, my bro. <laughs> yeah. By the way, the podcast episode for this week literally just dropped a few minutes ago. Um, oh, right on. John X26 Quasi. Uh, we talk about Iron Mike. It's the second part of uh, two, two-parter, and uh, this episode is fucking excellent. I mean, last week's was excellent, but we really get into Iron Mike and Lost Lake and the Ripper Treaty and all of that. Um, yeah, it's just it's a really, really good conversation. I'm really, really excited for people to hear this one. Uh, but anyway, uh, my reason for bringing him up, apart from the fact that he's an amazing guest on the podcast this week, he says, I think I still have an apple pie in my freezer, but the bloody thing takes an hour to cook. <laughs> yes, I, it's the Marie Callender's one you probably have. That's the one I'm eating right now. And I got it out of the freezer on Christmas Day. And I was like, oh, shit, it takes like 65 minutes to cook. And then you've got to put the crumbly stuff on the top. And then it takes another 10 minutes to cook. I'm sorry to just go off about apple pie. Um, <laughs> but Chrissy does say pie is better than the sawmill horde. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know about all that, but because uh, I mean, I could kill the sawmill horde all day, every day, but I couldn't eat pie all day, every day, you know. I mean, I could, True. but just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I but, get sick of pie after a while. And I don't think there's anything more of a sin than being made to get sick of pie. I mean, pie is amazing, and one should not ever get sick of it. <laughs> uh Borislav is in the chat. Yeah, I was oh, about to say hi to Borislav. To yeah, what's going on, brother? Uh also we have uh I, I I'm gonna apologize in advance if I fuck up your name. We have Vinath Vimal. Hello, hello and welcome. And uh let's see, Chrissy says she's got the munchies, she's making nachos. <laughs> Joe Schmo says, I don't know why, but I'm just not about fruit pies. But have you ever have you ever tried apple pie with a little bit of vanilla ice cream with it? Yeah. That's how I had it the other day. Oh, was it now? That sounds yummy. I've uh, got Cool Whip with it right now. I love the way. Can you say apple pie again? Apple pie. Apple pie. Apple pie. <laughs> Hello, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Hello from Texas. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you just got to try some of my mom's apple pie. <gasps> I'm What's sorry. A, key lime pie? App, no, apple pie with custard. Fuck Ew! Yeah. What is that? Fuck yeah! Who puts you know, must you know, Who puts mustard America. on their pie? Custard, custard! You fucking! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how do you spell that again? What What is that? Mustard with a C. C for Mu cunt. <laughs> <laughs> 
mustard mustard with a C. What what the hell kind of what the hell kind of shit is that now? Delicious on apple pie is what it is. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> oh wow! All right, so driving on. <laughs> well, I want to know from Boris Lab, have you done any more speed runs on hordes? Recently? Yeah, he did one just the other day. I mean, not to answer for you, bud, but I saw this one. It's the uh, my least favorite horde, the Mountain Bailey horde. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, that I just saw that it popped up just the other day. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but yeah, I saw that he had a new video out. And that is, again, that is my least favorite horde, so I would actually really like to see how Borislav handles that one. Awesome. Yeah, I, I was uh, busy over New Year, being kind of a little bit off the grid. Um, so I yeah. missed that one. I should check that out. Yeah, I took a couple days of uh, basically no phones, no social media myself for the New Year. Kind of, you know, found a little, I don't know, just kind of... I just kind of recharge my batteries, you know, and uh, find my center and stuff, and uh, pretty much disregarded all social media, everything. I also, I really hate New Year. I really? get really depressed. It's my least favorite holiday. Really? Um, so I and social media. That's my favorite. Is exactly. mm. yeah, social sorry. media, I think. It exacerbates the problem when it's all the I hate all the year in review everyone getting sentimental about oh, what they've done and um, beacons, the one near I, know, I just Creek. I hate that uh, it's, it's weird I can't put my finger on why I'm not trying to be negative or anything I just sure. for me it just it makes me depressed okay. um, I don't know maybe it's just in a, a bigger way sort of a reminder of our own mortality and the you know, uh, sure. It's heavy just, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's yeah. It's just it's just yeah. It's a heavy time yeah, of year. So sure. normally I don't like it. This year, I had a really fucking good time. Right on. Really good year. Right on. Just, yeah. Maybe this new year will be a little better for you. Good, yeah. I don't think I've had a good new year in like ever. So. I don't give a shit. All I want for you is information on Sarah. Anyway. Didn't yeah. mean to bring it down. No, no, you um, brought it up on a positive note. You said you had a good New Year this year. Yeah. That's a positive thing. Oh, shit. About to get spotted. Get over the fence, sir. I was kind of hoping I could just hop that fence real quick. Quasi says, what's all that white stuff blowing all around? We don't get that in California. <laughs> Unless it's ash from the wildfire. Like, yeah, man, I'm from Texas. I, I have lit I can count on one time uh, how many times... <laughs> I'm sorry, I can count on one hand how many times I've seen snow in my life. Shouldn't be too long. Uh, Chrissy says she's going to miss snow, but... I mean, we do get snow in California. You get it up in the mountains. Um, I don't know about Central California, but I'm pretty sure... I know San Francisco gets, uh, if not snow, it does get cold weather. So I imagine... I don't know exactly, Chrissy, where you're moving to, but sort of the Sacramento area does get chilly. Um, so I think you might like it because it's not sort of Midwest levels of snow. But you still have good seasons and weather and changeable, changeable weather. <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, John points out the mountains here are covered in snow right now. Right now, we had a rainstorm move through last week, yeah. and uh, at a certain elevation, when it hits the mountains, everything above it, it above that line, is snow. Oh, cool! Which is really cool. It's so beautiful. You drive through LA and you just see the mountains in the distance. I still remember the first time I noticed them, the first year I lived here, because I think in the summer you don't really see them um, because they're just sort of you know kind of like they just don't stand out necessarily depending on the weather but when the snow hits them mm. uh, you have like uh, a you have more contrast than more visual contrast yeah yeah cool 
That sounds beautiful, yeah. Most freaks are so caked with shit yeah. So this mission is pretty interesting to me. The discussion that they are having here where they are talking about the Freakers who are... I, I don't know if it's more evolved or just more in touch with their the remnants of their humanity where they're, they're wearing jewelry. They're wearing cleaner clothing. Um, you know, it's, it's really... I think it's a bit of foreshadowing, perhaps, to the secret ending with O'Brien where we find mm -hmm. out there are more highly evolved freakers who are more of a blend of human and freak. Um, so I, I think that's, this one is pretty interesting to me because of that. Is, is that some freaks mm -hmm. get up in the morning, they shower, they get dressed. They uh, Jeremy go uh, has got a bail. Good night. Oh, all right. Karen, happy new year. Yeah, man. It's good to see you, brother. Shitting themselves. Why the hell are these guys wasting their time with this shit? Hope you got all that, O'Brien. Okay, now I just gotta get the hell out of here. O'Brien, are you there? O'Brien! Hold on. Yeah, I'm here. I planted your tracking device and I got your data. The researcher, were they male or female? What? What? Why? Was it a man or a woman? Uh, it was a woman, and no, I didn't it's catch It's one of the name. ones where I always get caught okay. after the mission. <laughs> yeah. It's yes. away. I was caught, yes. I'm like, motherfucker, it's and this, it makes you repeat the... Yeah, the whole fucking thing, yeah. It's yeah. this one asshole right here, uh, this guy over here. When I step out from behind this house, he spots me almost every damn time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll show another little pro tip here, uh, since that's <laughs> kind of the whole point of me doing this stream here. Um, in this house, right here, we'll show where we're this at. This is so useful. I'm just going yes, to draw attention to this. Everyone pay attention right now, because this is really fucking <laughs> This useful. is a good one, yeah. Literally, pretty much the, mo the single most valuable crafting resource in Days Gone, and one of the most difficult to find fucking cans uh it's used in the tractors attractor bombs proximity bombs um smoke bombs if you use them you know the cans are an extremely valuable crafting resource in this game and they can be difficult to find but if you look on the map here we're here is the burley lake ambush camp if you go north and west of the burley lake ambush camp where you have these uh these this little row of houses right here this fourth house right here with the tiny little shed behind it this fourth house right here inside this house right here on the counter there are three cans right there on top of each other in addition to some other crafting materials nearby uh, I think there's even an alarm clock or two in here, yeah. Uh, now, I don't know if we can get there because of the mission that we're doing right now, but you have those three cans there. If you can sneak into on, this... Oh, problems. shut up. If you can sneak into this little blue house right here without getting spotted by these Nero assholes, there's another can in there. I'm not sure if we can get in there during this mission. No, because the researcher is still right there. But anyway, this little house right here, there is another can. So you have four cans in this one location just north and west of the Burley Lake Ambush Camp. And then, of course, at the sawmill over here at the Nero checkpoint, there's a couple of cans in here and a couple of cans in the tunnel up here. So between the Nero checkpoint at the sawmill and the train tunnel at the sawmill and these houses here, you can get a total of eight cans. I have to just say, you said a minute ago that this is the reason for your you streaming is to give out pro tips like this. And yes. Miranda says, no, 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 you misunderstand, <laughs> Rex. The reason for the stream is for us to hang out in the chat and tell dick jokes and wax poetic <laughs> about life and once in a while see you drive into a tree. <laughs> or, I will add, I, step in a bear trap. I am fully on board with all of that. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers. Fuck yeah. You know what? Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, Miranda. There. Just a little splash. Just enough to have a little toast with. Ah. <sighs> 
Damn, that's good. All right. <laughs> uh, but what I meant was the point of these feedback loop live streams here where Spawnicus Rex does the uh, the pro tips and, uh, you know, the, the advanced tactics and things like that. And Claire from the Days Gone podcast dives into the story, the writing, the acting, uh, all those little be behind the scenes details that make Days Gone so fucking fascinating. So, yeah, that's what I meant. And what do we have here? This is uh, riding the open road. Oh, I remember this one. Isn't this the one where we're supposed to go pick up uh, Boozer's bike? Is that right? Um, we have to return to O'Leary Mountain. Yeah, I, think I think we're that makes sense. Yeah, yeah we got to go get Boozer's bike. How are we doing on fuel and everything? Yeah, we're good. Anybody else just love? Like drifting in the snow and stuff. Of course, the snow's disappearing yeah. as I'm trying to say that, but still. I just love the way the snow disappears. It's literally like watching the snow melt on the ground. We are ganging up on you today, right? Oh, so goodness. Sorry. Um, what now? Chris, you said the title of this one should be Spawnicus Rex Gets Made Fun Of By Girls. <laughs> uh, I prefer Spawnicus Rex uh, Gets Teamed Up On By Three Girls. That sounds a lot more fun. People may have different expectations with that one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Where's that last asshole at? I know there's one more. There were three total. Where did he go? There was another runner. I appear to have lost... <laughs> Oh, God, what now? I know that laugh. I, there's nothing. When you hear a laugh like that, there is nothing good coming from it. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, John. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Balaj says, "How can you play this much of the same game? It's get, get, it's got to get tedious." No. Well, that is actually an interesting point, and I'm kind of glad you brought that up because I do have a counter to that. That's one of the initial things that fascinated me about Days Gone is the level of creative freedom that this game allows. Things like uh, being able to take on some of the biggest hordes in the game without firing a single shot. Uh, you know that I, I don't know, Balaz. You may not be familiar with uh, any of my earlier videos, but the if you've ever seen the the sawmill horde, five hundred freakers, no shots fired video, that was me. I'm the guy that came up with that, uh, and it's it's that level of creative freedom where Days Gone allows you to take control of virtually every situation in the game pretty much any way you want to and, and let you do whatever you want to do with it. Uh, that That is what fascinated me with this game initially. So you can handle any situation in the game pretty much any way you can imagine um, using a various combination of weapons or no weapons at all. That is what keeps me playing the game. Looking for different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For me, it's the story and the mm -hmm. detail of the, sure. the world and the characters and all of the little nuances, all the little windows into their pasts and their points of view, all of the little clues um, that kind of tell you more about the story, the questions about the story. For example, what happened at Sherman's camp? You know, it's very ambiguous in the game, but if you pay attention, if you look at the um, some of the collectibles and you kind of extrapolate from there and also having the art book kind of helps as well True. Um, so some info in that but yeah that art book so is fucking can, incredible yeah there's so much you can piece together that create this really deep rich world yeah and I, there's True. so much in that that I actually can't hold it all in my head so I love to replay the game because every time there's something that I've, I've forgotten I mean, I do the podcast to talk about all that stuff. And I, I make mistakes all the time. I misremember things. 
Uh, I have to do a lot of research before every episode because there is just so much in this game and that to me is why uh, I love it. Yeah, agreed and well said. Uh, Misery loves shotguns in the chat, which hey, I absolutely love your username. Um, <laughs> right we, on. We've yeah. Shotgun! On, on Reddit. <laughs> um, okay. Misery loves shotguns says, I did the Iron Butte horde tonight with no shots fired. Awesome. Oh, right I on. did blow myself up with a mine and finish them <laughs> off near death. Only self inflicted damage. <laughs> still, that still counts. As I mean, a win. yeah, that, that counts, still right? Right. Win. So I uh, still did. Iron Butte Horde with no shots fired. Yeah, fucking A. Uh, so I'm curious, um, Misery Love Shotguns, did you attempt to use my method or did you come up with something different? Um, I, because that is my preferred method for doing the Iron Butte Horde. I love doing that no shots fired method on those guys. Um, it no longer works on PC, though, because remote bombs no longer function properly. Yeah, so, I mean, it makes it really difficult. But uh, that is my preferred method for taking out that horde. I actually was inspired by Borislav to try to do yeah. the horde speedily. And I did. I think I did it. I didn't time myself, but I'm, it, I know it was under two minutes. Yeah. Which, for me, I normally take my time and do, like, a lot of laying traps and hiding and throwing shit out of the bushes and running around and running away. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm trying. I've been... I just finished my third playthrough recently and I'm just sort of going around mopping up all the hordes and I'm actually trying out different things now. Whereas yes. before I didn't really have a method for for taking out the hordes, I just I mean oh. my method was probably just like Look at you stepping out of your comfort them. zone. I know, it's almost like you've had an influence on me. No, surely not. Almost. It's, no, no, I said it's almost, almost. like that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, sir. Um <laughs> Uh, but no, I mean, it, seeing other people do the hordes or even any element of the game with different tactics to your own mm -hmm. is it's so fucking, it's entertaining, it's eye-opening, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it, it and, challenges you. Because sometimes yeah. I, watch, I watch your method and I'm like, I don't even want to do it that way. Like, that just feels so wrong, you know, because you have like... But it just looks badass. Style, <laughs> but it looks cool. And it's like if you try it, then suddenly, wow, that could actually be part of your repertoire. Exactly. You know, you can add to your skill set. And that goes so. back into uh, what I was saying to answer Balaj's question about, you know, how do you keep playing this game without getting bored with it? There's your answer right there. You know, yeah. trying different stuff, just literally trying new things to see if you like it and to see how well it works for you. Important in most aspects in life, I think. Absolutely. I talked before on uh, this was on the uh, the the podcast episodes I did the little three parter. There was a conversation about podcasting with other podcasters, and I talk about this thing that I started years ago called Operation Comfort Zone, yeah. which was all about challenging myself to step out of my comfort zone and do all those things that I air quotes didn't have permission to do or couldn't do or wasn't good enough to do we all have those things it's like oh one day i'll try a hobby or i'll get into whatever it is that i want to do but like right now i don't i'm not good enough to do it and i just heard myself say that and i was like what that no, reminds me gets to decide who's that, good enough at something like you shouldn't limit yourself that reminds you me of something you said yeah, you uh know. I love the way you said this in one of those podcast episodes that you're talking about where you did the episode pod about podcasting and uh, mm -hmm. you were like, you know, there's this little voice that tells you you're not good enough to do that. You know, you're not cool enough to do that. And you're like, hey, wait, fuck you, little voice. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, right on. You fuck you, little voice. I'm going to do that shit because it sounds fun, you know, and that's pretty can much. That's like when I started uh, live streaming and, and really when I started the taking the YouTube channel seriously, it's like, no, you know, you're not a good enough gamer to do that. You know, you're not you're not cool enough to do this and make it entertaining. And it's like, you know what? Fuck you, little voice. I'm going to do it anyway, man. Let's see what happens. Yeah. That's why I started the podcast, because it's like I'm no expert on Days Gone. 
like, no one put me in charge of doing the Days Gone podcast. Yeah, but you did. I just fucking love it. And I wanted to do a podcast and I wanted to talk about the game. So I just mm-hmm. did it. Sure. And then I even started doing, I've done a few live streams. I, I don't really find it entertaining for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't enjoy it, but I stepped out of my comfort zone. I was like, maybe I want to try doing this. Yeah. So when people were asking a few weeks ago if I was going to play and you were going to, like, uh... you know, be, the, be just the, the voice behind the, uh, you know, kind of watching me play the game, I, it, I, get too, I get too nervous. I can't play my way it's not i think my style is not very entertaining i do a lot of slow stealthy um you know take things down very methodically and i'll restart a lot if things don't go the way i like it to go so that's why it takes me like 100 hours to play through the game that's why in a year of playing days gone i've only gone through it three times um, <laughs> yeah and this most, I, I this am most a most recent slow player. it would not yeah well actually I, I actually had two things i wanted to say about that one is that for a lot of players, that is entertaining. The more slower, uh, like more tactical, stealth type play style. Because I know a lot of people get frustrated with me seeing me accidentally drive off in the middle of an ambush camp and just start <laughs> blasting, you know? Uh, where it's like, whoa, dude, wait, weren't, weren't you going to use some stealth, you know? Uh, let's see some stealth takedowns and stuff. So, you know, just to counter that, a lot of people actually do find that play style entertaining because that's what yeah. they like themselves. But also, um, ah, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. I almost wrecked well, the bike can, a minute ago and broke my concentration. <laughs> if I can interject off that, the reason why I don't live stream playing, it, like, why it is I don't enjoy putting that out there, that mm. play style. Uh, but that's not to say that that play style is not entertaining and that if anyone wants to live stream and they have that play style go for that is it absolutely yeah not a, a um a thing that should stop you yeah go for you know, it absolutely go for it um it's just for me i don't find it enjoyable it's like i went for it and i was like yeah i actually don't like doing this i don't like the the perceived pressure mm. that i put on myself i yeah. don't i yeah, want right, right. i could work through that but i wasn't passionate enough about streaming to work through that um, yeah. But I think if you are passionate and you do want to stream, fucking go for it. You and I actually had a great conversation on episode 20, I believe it was, no, was it 20? The podcast, um, hmm. where we talk about live streaming and how you can get into it. So if anyone watching this is interested in live streaming, check that out. Uh, episode 20 of the Days Gone podcast. Spornicus Rex graciously gives his, um, you share your knowledge and your insight into how to do live streaming. Which I think yeah. is fucking Yeah, which actually that one was a lot of fun. Um because it that that's literally like the whole point is if you if you want something, fucking reach out and take it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do this, you're not good enough to do this, you're not cool enough to do this. Man, fuck that. Fuck you, little voice, you know? Absolutely. And by if anyone tells you you can't do that, that includes yourself. If you are telling yourself. Yes. Yeah, the little voice, enough. you know. Like, everybody everybody has that little shadow that sits on your sits on your shoulder, you know, whispering shit in your ear, you know, you're not good enough, you're not cool enough. Everybody everybody experiences that. Don't give in to that shit. Fuck you, little voice. <laughs> That would make a good thumbnail. What do you think? Is yeah. that too much yellow? Too much orange? Oh, I love cool. I love that golden sunrise or golden sunset kind of color to it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that one's nice. And then, yeah, that one's oh, good so too. Oh, so Chrissy, Chrissy in the chat. Sorry, I, I, hey, I wasn't up? looking at the chat for a minute. She yeah, says, uh, one day I would love to do a live stream. I have a fear that I'm going to ramble too much. Uh, no, that, I think that's you know, perfect. <laughs> yeah, the actually, Chrissy, talk, Chrissy and I joked about that a while back. I was like, fuck yeah. I mean, you're as, as, as good a job as you do as moderating and familiar as you are with the live stream forum, because Chrissy watches a lot of live streams. It's like you're really familiar with this medium of entertainment i think you'd be fucking great at it go for it if nothing else it'll be really entertaining for us <laughs> Richie, 
she, quote, stays gone, what the hell else are we going to do? Yeah, man, right on. Damn fucking Skippy. Yeah, and um, Zylok brings up uh, a good thing that we talked about on that uh, on that episode. Mm -hmm. uh, we reaffirmed um, one of the things that Zylok found out about any kind of live performance. All live performers screw up, have technical failures. It's mm -hmm. all about how you deal with it. I mean, exactly. I don't want to jinx it, but this is Touch on episode seven <laughs> Touch of wood. the feedback loop stream. <laughs> this is our first episode in which we have not had some sort of technical fa failure is it the very first one i thought we had one or two earlier on that early on that were okay but it's been a while no, we we, we, some, we had a bit of a bad stretch week. there yeah <laughs> we had a bit of a bad stretch there where we were having uh technical difficulties uh let's see borslav says was your first live stream a good experience <laughs> he clearly hasn't listened to the to the live stream episode of the podcast <laughs> uh yeah borslav i uh admitted in uh, that episode of the podcast where we talked about live streaming, I admitted that my very first live stream was a fucking disaster. <laughs> it was a fucking disaster, man. I uh, I didn't have any microphone audio. I had just gotten my PlayStation Five, and I had just gotten the uh, the headphones that come or they're made to go with the PlayStation Five. So I had a microphone. I had a PlayStation. I was ready to rock and roll. Uh, but I did the whole live stream, and I did not have any mic audio. The audience couldn't hear me at all because I didn't know there was a hidden setting. There's In the settings, you go in and you tell the PlayStation, yes, recognize audio from the microphone for this live stream. You also have to go into the setting for the live stream itself and tell it, no, really. Yes. Use the microphone for this live stream. Uh, so there was a hidden setting that I wasn't aware of. And the whole damn thing was recorded, uh, streamed with no audio from my mic. So the very next week, I came back on and just redid everything. I redid the whole start where you where I was showing everybody how to get the SMP9 early. So to answer your question, <laughs> no, nah, man, my first live stream was a fucking disaster. Uh, so if you decide to, you know, step out of that comfort zone, zone and and do a little live streaming yourself don't sweat it man it's all good uh shit hit me up you know uh, if you need any help or any suggestions or whatever i got your back man just holler at me um so we're on this mission here um just real quick uh, yeah. miranda is leaving cheeseburgers are calling her name <laughs> oh yeah i remember she said earlier that she had uh cheese she made cheeseburgers for everybody Yes, apparently with lots of ease. Cheese. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Go enjoy those cheeseburgers. <laughs> right on. Uh, no onions and uh, no mayo on mine, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, Chrissy says uh, maybe after oh after she gets done with her move, she'll try to fire up uh, maybe some Dragon Age Inquisition. <laughs> Are you still obsessed with Solus, or or have you finally gotten over Solus breaking your heart? <laughs> Uh, all right. So anyway, we have this uh, He's My Brother mission where we're going to get Boozer's bike. I know a lot of people, I always think this is interesting when I see this on Reddit. Um, a lot of people don't realize that on this mission, you don't actually have to do anything except show up and grab the bike. Because Which a lot of... really stupid. <laughs> well, no, because it's it's Addy. I think, isn't is it Addy or Ricky? It's like, you know, hey, this was a really sweet thing you did for Boozer. We're going to send some guys up there to grab your bike for you. Uh, so I thought that was kind of cool myself, but it's a lot. I know it's people... Kind of, it's kind of dumb ahead. of Beacon if he mm, knows that he's uh, going to yeah, ride up there. Yeah, right, and leave bike, his bike. Right there, yeah, sure. He's got to walk back up. Like, why not just... It takes you twice as long. Why not just walk up there and get the bike? I feel like that should have been the mission. To walk there on foot? Or, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Or I don't know or, how I, I feel know. about that one. We should have tried that. I didn't think about that. We should have Apparently tried that. Apparently it doesn't take very long. Yeah, I guess not. Five minutes. Oh, yeah? No, oh, that's not too bad. Yeah. Some people in the chat were saying... I've, uh, yeah, I see, uh, Selby like, Miser oh. did that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I think I just interrupted you. I apologize. No, no, uh, we're all good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the solution would be, but it just seemed kind of clunky that they do imply that you have to walk up there. So mm -hmm. a lot of people... Always on Reddit. A lot of people coming in and walk saying, oh, all the okay. way to the mission. Yeah, I'm like, oh the man. <laughs> and then it's like you drive the bike back, and, and then it's like, oh, we'll go get your bike. It just seems fucking it seems hilarious. So weird. You can think that's a good idea. Yeah. Not knowing well, that someone was going to go get his bike. 
Yeah. I mean, it's another one of those things where he wasn't... It's kind of like when he brought the um, Thunder Egg to Lisa. He just he wanted to do something nice for someone, but right. he's really, but he's really not accustomed to doing nice things for people anymore. And he kind of botches it, you know, it's like, he doesn't think it through. He's like, Oh, well, this sounds, this sounds like something that this person would appreciate. So I'm going to go ahead and do it without really thinking it through or, or planning it out or considering consequences. And, uh, you know, let's just Even go do he's it. Not, he's, he's not the smartest guy. I'm not, I disagree strongly with that. I think uh, Deacon is no dummy, but when it comes to maybe social interactions, personal interactions, you know, when it comes to being generous and giving, that is something he has no experience with. It's something that he has no frame of reference for, you know? Yeah. Uh, Chrissy says, um, Deacon, how to be nice, but is completely awkward about it. An mm -hmm. autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How to make a fool of yourself trying to be nice to people <laughs> by yeah. Deacon St. Yeah, John. <laughs> oh, and this is another one where it really fucking backfires. It totally backfires because... Right here, we hey, see I mean, that Boozer is like, oh, awesome, man. You brought me my bike. Badass. And then it's, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I can't ride anymore. This is just a paperweight. There he goes. It's the one thing I miss is being on the open road. And it also, the bike for Boozer, that is his last material connection to Joni. His wife, mm -hmm. who died before the before the uh, shit hit the fan, so you know, in that moment he's he's literally forced to face everything that he has lost. He lost his arm. He lost his wife. You know all of that. Uh, and you know for Boozer there is no happy ending. He doesn't find his wife at the end of the story. Uh, all he's got is a bike that he can't ride and grief. And memories. And a, a happier best friend. And a happier best friend. Which, you know, I mean, I guess so vicariously he can, you know, find happiness through Deacon. And, that's you know, not, it's that's not, not the, same. the same. It's not the same. No, ma'am, it is not. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Zylok, uh says it would be funny. It would have been hilarious if Deke left his bike on O'Leary Mountain and Copeland stole his bike. <laughs> Again. <laughs> 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 Oh, Dude. There, like, oh shit, we parted it out no, again. No, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I would just have to roll up in Copeland's camp with the MG45 and be like, all right, you fuckers are mine. Come here. <laughs> just say, MG, I'm going to be in my bunk. <laughs> Calm down, Weaver. Jeez. Hey, hey Buzz. <laughs> yeah, but Chrissy does point shit. out, Boozer's story oh, does lovers. end yeah, really well because he here. gets a puppy. No. Little Jack. Yeah, sorry, that's not quite the See same either. Deke. Okay, hey, what what time do we have here? Uh, I've got 10.53 my time. It is actually, unfortunately, I think it's about that time for me to shut it down. Uh, I do have to work in the morning. We just finished a pretty interesting set of missions. Had some killer fucking conversations. Man, I'll tell you what, this stream has been, this stream has been on fire tonight, man. This has been a really good one. Not to speak too soon, but no technical mm. problems. <laughs> right. Do we, do we make it through an episode I, without fucking you know what? something up? <laughs> well, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we did manage to get through a, an entire stream without uh, having any technical difficulties this time. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, let's get this set up here. Get us a nice little spot where we can just kind of shut it down for the night. You just go. make photo mode sound effects. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, 
let's see. Did we miss anything in the chat recently? Yeah. Uh, Chrissy says Deacon has uh, forgotten how to be kind due to his loss. Thank you. You just perfectly said everything that I rambled about for five minutes. That's what I was trying to say. He's forgotten how to be a kind, caring, and compassionate person. He is in at his core, but he doesn't remember how to be that man anymore. And, uh, yeah, yeah. That's part of his story. <laughs> well, that's part of his story arc is we see Deacon steadily remembering how to be the man he once was. We see that side of him waking up again. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Um, and let's see. Did we miss anything else in the chat? Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's about time to shut it down. Uh, all right. Uh, Claire, um, don't you have a way that people can contribute to your... Um, your efforts over there on the Days Gone podcast. What have you got going on? I do, yeah. Um, so I have a uh, way that if people want to support the podcast, uh, they can visit buymeacoffee.com slash Days Gone Pod. And it's a way to just throw a little money in the tip jar and, and kind of help me with the overhead costs of running the podcast. Um, just a reminder, new episode drops right now. Uh, it's part two of my conversation with uh, Quasimoto, also known as 626 Aussie, also known as John Patterson in the chat right now. Um, and we talk about Iron Mike, do a big deep dive into his character, uh, Lost Lake, his relationships with some of the key people at Lost Lake, and the treaty with the Rippers. And uh, part one last week, we talked about what really happened at Sherman's camp. So if anyone hasn't checked that out, definitely take a listen to that one. Um, both episodes are live right now. Well, not live. They're recorded, but they're available right now. <laughs> yeah, right and on. And Rex, uh, you're resuming your Ghosts of Tsushima streams on Saturday? Hell yeah. So yeah, I missed a couple of uh, Saturday night streams, had a birthday party a couple weeks ago. Uh, then you know we had Christmas and the New Year's just all happened to fall on Saturday. Uh, and uh, so yeah, I skipped a few of those. And, and man, I miss being a ninja on Saturday night. So guess what? Next Saturday, we're going full fucking ninja, man. We're back on with Ghost of Tsushima. Um, so I would like to remind everybody, you know, if you haven't already, and most of the folks in the chat and on the stream tonight are already subscribers to the channel, uh, like, subscribe, comment, man. It, it makes the algorithm take notice and drives up the numbers. Um, you know, whenever I'm doing streams like this, I do have super Super Chats ready. I also have a Patreon page set up now, so you can check out my Patreon if you want to throw a little money in my tip jar and, and help this channel grow. On that note, a lot of the folks that have been around on my stream for a while, you already know, pretty much every fucking penny I get from stuff like that goes back into the channel. I just recently bought some new hardware. I'm super fucking excited, man. Uh, I meant to announce this earlier, uh, but we just got busy talking about other stuff. For Christmas, I was gifted a fucking killer new microphone I'm super excited to check out that new mic and i also uh used some of my youtube ad revenue money and some of my super chat money to purchase a uh audio processor so i'm gonna have the the new mic hooked into the audio processor so we should have some pretty kick-ass audio for the next couple of streams once i get all of that set up uh so anyway that's where that money goes the super chat money the patreon supporter money it Man, it goes right back into the channel. If you want to see the channel grow, hook a brother up, man. Help me out. And as far as Claire's, um, her buy me a coffee website, um, you know, I'll tell you what, folks, there's nothing quite like putting a smile on a pretty girl's face. You heard the lady. Go buy the girl a coffee. I'm going to shut it down, folks. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Good night.